All righty, we're live again, back again. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's having a, what is it, a beautiful Saturday morning. I'm going to give it a few minutes while uh, people people get on in here, as I do understand this is a little bit out of the uh, out of left field for your usual timing on a uh, weekend stream. Let me just bring up all of my proper pages over here while I get set up myself. And let's see, let's just notify some people. That would be good. <laughs> you typically want people to be in here, you know. But anyways, I hope everyone's having a uh, a nice little weekend, wh whatever you might be doing in this world. There we are. Okay, we got it over here. Beautiful. Let me just do that up right there. Absolutely awesome. Get this link out over here. Make sure that this is going well. And we can get started in just a goddamn moment. Okay. All right. Let me get the chat up over here. And all right. I'm there. I'm there. I'm here. I'm here with you. I'm wishing everyone a happy morning where you might be in this world. Let me just make sure that uh, this is going well over here. It is. So that's all well and good. Okay. <laughs> Getting some funny comments uh, on the offhand over here if you're wondering what I'm laughing about. But going to be a nice little, uh, probably a shorter morning stream as I'm sure. There's probably not too many people up right now as it is uh, very early morning over there in uh, the good old states. So if you're coming back from a night late night in the uh, in the good old clubs, then, then I welcome you. I welcome you and I hope that you're having all kinds of uh, <laughs> of uh, what's it called good old hangovers in your life right now and we can talk about some good old charts right here what's up man how you doing love me some cpt what's up man good to have you back here as well and i guess i'm just gonna start talking as uh looks like what's up can we how you doing man can we a pleasure as always pleasure as always mr can we and let's see candlestick edition indeed mr Maiko. all right so i'm gonna start uh i'm gonna start going over what we see over here and uh, with yesterday's daily dildo we did or daily <laughs> daily dilly um we did essentially put in you know do you want to call this a long look at doji do you want to call it a doji i don't care what you call it but typically a sign of um of indecision and perhaps reversal now yeah now that's kind of your traditional way of looking at it right however we notice very clearly that it's on very low volume. So I'm really running through all of the things of, of, of potential possibilities going on right now. One of them is uh, one of them is a little bit bullish. One of them is is pretty bearish, and one of them is extremely bearish. <laughs> so so unfortunately, um, we're just gonna have to deal with all of this for the next uh, most likely month, I'd imagine. Again. It looks to me like on the lower time frames, we are in some sort of a uh, rising channel. If you want to call this a bear flag, you can definitely call it a bear flag. It does seem to have the right proportions, the right shape, the right volume characters. So if it looks like one, it smells like one, it's probably one, right? Anyways, um, coming back down again last night while I was sleeping, you might have been awake. You might have been having a nice night out on the town uh, when we wicked down and tested this blue box area once again. A uh, decent reaction off of it. I guess that was due to the Coinbase news um, that they're going to add some more shit coins or I don't, I don't know about that. But again, you know, Coinbase is a very interesting place to begin with. So you can never really uh, truly trust what they're going to say. Uh, Brian Armstrong is uh, a questionable character in my mind at the very least. So again, uh, what I'm looking at right here is that as long as we're kind of within the within the bounds of this support and this resistance, I'm just playing the range. So I actually am in a little bit of a long right now. I have an entry about $19. I'll probably be getting out of this as I, as, as I have a stop about about a buck and a half away right now. Again, not the best trade. I really don't like to be taking uh, longs in a bearish market. Typically, not the best thing to be doing. In fact, it's quite it's quite literally against my um, my proverbial strategy. What's up, DJ Me Pops? How you do, man? The world is so sad. Let's all sing together. Let's give it a good old hug. Simply Gains, what's up, man? What it do, indeed. <laughs> what else do we got? A0128, crown, you have my my baby, okay? Buy you Uggs and iPad. Oh, that's exactly what I need in my life, baby. <laughs> a little bit of Starbucks in my right hand as well. Hey, Rick Lewis, welcome back, man. Welcome back. Good morning to you, too. And, okay. So back now over here, uh, it looks to me to be very clear that in a more shorter term time frame, we talked about this yesterday, this resistance right here at about 6,300. And um, if we zoom in, we can see a very clear, a very clear, uh, what do you want to call this? Um, pattern is being formed, or sorry, a very clear range is, is the right word to use here. A very clear range is being, is being formed, again, with your support right here and your resistance right here. So if I did want to be more of a day trader, if I did want to be more of a, uh, of a proactive trader on this lovely weekend, which is typically fucking boring but sometimes we actually have been having some action actually the last uh the last couple weekends i've been completely wrong about that 
um, as typically I do look look at my weekends as you know pretty pretty low volume, uh, just you know fuck around range that kind of shit. Um, so again, you know, if we did have like a thirty minute dildo close, or sorry, thirty minute dilly close above uh, sixty three hundred, then yes, we could. Um, I think that we will have a little bit of upside here. We do have resistance uh, somewhere right around here, around sixty four seventy five on Finex. Um, and by the same token, as long as we're above here, you know, there's not really too much downside. I know that's not profound in any way to say, but here's the reason why it is very, um, very, uh, what's, what's the word? Very, um, important, you know, with the, given the whole entire, uh, you know, charting sphere going on right here. And that is because if we do break it to the downside and if we do confirm below this area right here, especially below this horizontal area, as I do like to, as I do favor horizontals over diagonals, they just seem to just seem to work out better in my experience around uh, 64. 40, then this is going to really start to look like a, a bear flag or sorry it already does look like a bear flag but it's going to look like it's it's going to be confirmation in my mind and if we do have a bear flag and if we do have confirmation we can make a measure move off that doesn't mean it's always going to work but you know let's make the assumption that we're making assumptions here just to be quite clear and uh, and if it did well look at that it's just another thing pointing us down to this you know 44 to 4500 region again very similar to our smaller cup and handle uh right here where you can see the uh, the red um going on there Sorry, let me just get this. Uh, let me just get this going one more time. So again, now we have two things kind of pointing in this in this uh, direction. Now, yes, it's not perfect. It's kind of more like a range. So I'd probably it's probably best to represent this as like a as like another blue box territory. As that's really how supporting resistance are. You know, it's it, it's 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 a fucking range. Um, so again, what is happening? Where's Mitch? Who am I? Where am I? What is this? Who's this? Ma who's this massive idiot talking right now? Hey, what's up, Sarchok? Good to meet you too. My name's Crown. I'm not Mitch, but, <laughs> but good to have you in here, man. What's up, man? How you doing, Crypto Hash? Pleasure to have you back in here as well. Trying to hide from me, I see. How dare you? I would never do that. Bitcoin bits or biz, biz, bits on bits, <laughs> bits on bits. Ah, oh, I see what it is now. A clever turn of phrase. I understand that. All right. <laughs> yeah, man, we're uh, just a little bit of a collaboration. I hope that you don't hate my face too much. I know that I am ugly, but I can talk pretty well. So <laughs> I at least have that going for me. Anyways, um, so we have two things now pointing us down into this 4000 region right here. And um, and not only that, we I mean we actually have much more. And I want to talk a little bit more about uh, something that I haven't been mentioning recently, but it is starting to it's, it's starting to get a little bit weird in the way that this could play out. So again, here's your Bitstamp chart. You know, this is you know your almost 10 year history of Bitcoin. We have a logarithmic trend line going all the way back to the inception, the Genesis block that's never been broken in the almost 10 year history of Bitcoin, and um, and that is uh, is this trend line right here. Now the now the relevance of this is that. You know, we do have a way, another, just another way of getting to this 4,400 region right here. It's also a nice horizontal area. You'd imagine that. Oh, I've just got, just got ticked on my uh, stop. Um, and then also you can see this 200 exponential, that purple line right there is going to start to curl up in, in, in probably around that region. Also, you have your 786 Fibonacci retracement. Now I've talked about all this before. What I'm going to talk about new right now, or at least new on this channel is this right here. Okay. All right. So. So you have your logarithmic trend line right here, your downtrend line that everyone was talking about, you know, you know, up until this area right here in uh, in, in mid-April when we broke out, which was which was quite impressive indeed. You know, we had a very sim uh, similar uh, thing going on over here in uh, twenty what is this twenty fourteen? Yes, sorry, um, where you know you break out of your 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 first logarithmic down downtrend line line right here, and then you form another one right there, and then you kind of find your lows along that logarithmic trend line. Okay, now with that said, with that said, I need to get out of this fucking position, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Crown. All right, sorry about this. A uh, little bit of a uh, little bit of a stutter step over here, and as I stutter myself. Anyways, um, with that said, we do have now all of these areas converging right around here, and there is a date on this area. The date is April is actually August tenth, which, if you're familiar with all of the uh, the good memes going on right now in the crypto sphere, is the date of the uh, of the decision for 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 the ETF. Now, that's actually a little bit less incomplete than. Um, than, 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 than what's really going on. Actually, that's not quite, uh, it's not quite clear when the date is going to be. Yes, it technically is 45 days out, which would put you at August 10th. However, more importantly, there is a stipulation that says that they could take up to 90 days uh, to make that decision if they, if they deem it necessary. So again, you know, these, these games are played in the, in the, in the, in all, in all realms, you know, again, I come from a, uh, come from an equity options market making background and, uh, and, and, and in a very highly regulated market like that, you know, where I'm down on an exchange like like New York Stock Exchange, um, ARCA and Chicago Board of Ops Exchange, you know, there's still <laughs> there's still a lot of questionable shit going on, is what I'm trying to say. Um, you know, so at the end of the day, um, 
you know, games are played and these sorts of things do, you know, if they do have confluence with each other, you, you, you start to wonder, you start to wonder. So I'm not saying that it's going to happen one to one. I'm not saying it's going to happen, you know, verbatim or anything like that. I'm just offering it up as an idea as, of, uh, of something that I haven't seen anything to negate it so far. Again, the two big things uh, pointing us down there now is we have two formations. We have this bear flag, the measure move on this, on this bear flag, and then the measure move on this inverted cup and handle. Both of these patterns have a high degree of playing out in my experience. Okay, so again, this is also making the assumption that we actually do break out this bear flag to, and confirm itself below this uh, this support trend line right here. If that does indeed happen, then um, then yes, you know, it's just just another thing to tick off the box, another snowball uh, snowball um, type event, if you will. So. More importantly, though, more importantly, the reason why I'm not short right now and the reason why I don't want to be aggressively short is because as long as we're, as long as we're within the bounds of this bear flag right here, we can whip around and play rope-a-dope along this support and this resistance. And keep in mind, this resistance is constantly rising over time. So we could get all the way up to here to this blue box, and we would technically still be you know, in, in the context of a bear flag, which is statistically more likely to break out to the downside. So I always have to keep that in my mind. So again, this makes it a little bit difficult for Bitcoin bulls because because you can't get you don't have any sort of change behavior at all whatsoever until you actually start closing dillies above this area right here 7100 so again um you know that's the whole thing with that is that we're in we're in a big range right now and you know you might see people get excited about this coinbase news and about all this all this you know bullshit and all that kind of stuff but at the end of the day the trend is is very is very clearly still you know the same we haven't had any sort of change behavior nothing at all that 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 designates that fact um back now over here let me just make sure okay it looks like there's two million in the order book right there um but i think i should get filled it's not uh, uh, they are selling it pretty hard but fair enough i'm gonna go down to the lower time frames right now just to kind of make sure that i'm gonna be uh that i don't get you know fucked up in this one you know what i might actually not want to get out of this position oh uh, yeah i do i do want to get out of this position <laughs> okay yeah fuck this um so again you know i really don't like trading against the trend but i th I, th I thought it was an okay risk reward opportunity and i liked this kind of uh, reaction off this um off the test of your blue box support right there. So again, that's, you know, typically, t typically you do see some fall through uh, after that. Maybe we do, but I want to be a little bit more careful here as I am on live stream. And, you know, sometimes price action can jump around extremely fucking fast and I don't want to wake up with a red dildo in my asshole. Sorry, red dilly in my butthole, in my bunghole. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's see. What else we got? Monthly still equals wrecked, says Tyler. Yes, indeed, man. Let's go check it out, guys. Uh, by the way, this is why I'm overall extremely bearish as well, man. The monthly is is telling you something right here. It's telling you something. We have a three-year bull run. Tweezer top dilly formation right here. That's your reversal formation. Consolidation between 6,000 and 12,000 right here, and then break that consolidation, resolving that consolidation to the downside, which to me means that we're actually just getting ready to play out some, some serious downside, uh, as this was just consolidation right here. Again, I can represent it to you in a different way, which might which might make it a little bit more um, a little bit more convincing as I take off this uh, this inverted cup formation right here let's just get this area over here do you guys like my office or what um so so over here we have the green triangle the green triangle of peace if you want to call it that and again this is this is why i really do believe that this was consolidation and why i'm very um adamant about this likely being a more prolonged bearish market this green area of consolidation tightened the area between 6,000 and 12,000. You have a lot of characteristics of distribution over here and over here. You do have a little bit of accumulation going on, but obviously when you have a consolidation and it gets resolved to the downside, that's giving you confluence that there's participation in the market with us or, or agreement in the market with us, you know, more, more than likely playing out a more prolonged downtrend. Um, so again, you, we have this we have also a very orderly fall off in volume going on over here as well. So again, all of these characteristics do qualify this in my mind as uh, as consolidation. And again, resolving that consolidation to the downside, well, <laughs> likely leading to more downsides. So I know that that's probably counterintuitive to what a lot of people think. They're probably saying, "Crown, what the fuck? This this was a bear market right here." Well, actually, no. By 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 Oxford Dictionary definition, it was not. It was consolidation. It was not until we broke this um this lower support right here. Sorry, on this red dilly right here, where you got this this nice spike in volume after a long time of you know falling volume that we actually um that that we actually entered a a a, a real like we had a change behavior resolving that consolidation to the downside probably leading most likely leading to to more prolonged downside all right okay let's see what else we got over here um 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 we got some we got some drama going on everyone loves a good drama uh let's see let's see 
Okay. Yes, the couching cat. Yes, you like the casting couch? Oh, indeed, man, indeed. All right. Uh, who else we got? Uh, LOL. I don't know if I'm okay with the cast on the couch. I don't know if I'll enjoy that video that comes from that. What are you talking about, man? This is uh, this is my office. Uh, <laughs> what? What are you guys talking about? Uh, that background made me jump watching on a 50-inch flat screen in the dark anyway. Mitch was great, but these streams get, got too long and uh, kept diverting from the main purpose. Best wishes to him, though. Well, fair enough, man. Fair enough. You, you're going to probably also notice that I do... Um, uh, I, I also you crown you to the man. Hey, I, I really do appreciate that, man. You're gonna notice that I also jump around a lot as well. But please, you be the one to tell me when I um, when I'm doing it a little bit too much, or if it's not, uh, or if something's not clear. I'm happy to to you know uh, offer some points of clarification. At the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, man. Um, you know, it's it, to, to, to me, it's it's more important that people get it as uh, as I know, you know, I can be a little bit spazzy in the way that I represent things. So again, going back on over here, it looks like I did get jumped. So let's see, what should I really be doing? I need to go over here to Mex to really check out what's going on. Yeah, we are turning down right here. So I, I certainly don't like that. Um, will I get filled up my uh, at my order? Well, that's a good question. Um, here's going to be my plan for this because I do need to manage risk quite soon as uh, I really don't want to take a don't want to take a massive, a massive hit off this one. Um, so if we go below 6202, I'm going to take this position off. So yeah, it's going to be like a, going to be like a $15 loss. I'm, pl I'm pretty much uh, perfectly okay with that as at the end of the day, you know, it's a risk reward type play. And if I can just, uh, if, and if, and if I can just, um, what's it called, uh, identify these good risk reward plays over time, well, statistically speaking and making the assumption that my technical analysis is, you know, is, is somewhat good. Um, then, then I should be successful just from a risk reward perspective, you know, it, expected value uh, scenario. Okay, so let's go check out the higher time frames. Do we have anything new to look at from the higher time frames? We have this major Darth uh, Darth Maul dilly over here, just poking through both sides. A clear rejection um, of this 6300 uh, area yesterday. So again, oh man, this is going fast now. Oh god damn it, Bitcoin, are you gonna fuck me right now? Well, fair enough. Anyways, um, so let's see the four hour. What have we got in the four hour? Not too much going on in the four hour either. But yeah, this makes me. Yeah, mm -mm. yeah. There's not much to say about that either. Uh, what about the six hour? Six hour, not telling you much. Uh, much different either. All of these look bearish to me. Uh, Twelve hour, same sort of thing. Another Darth Maul dilly over there. What about the two day? Uh, two day looks like shit. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. This is, you know, I'm I'm trying to find a more bullish case. I'm trying to find a more bullish scenario because I always want to be as balanced as possible. So here's the best that I can come up with for the bulls. And it's basically just going over to this right here. Again, we have our, you know, th this whole market cycle going down over here, which is very analogous to what we saw in a in a previous uh, Bit full Bitcoin market cycle in 2014. Again, just kind of recap: we have the devastation cross with your 100 exponential, that cyan line crossing to the downside of your purple line, the 200 exponential, and then we had this uh, this price action. You know, your dump consolidation pumped your yellow 21, dump a little bit lower again, pump back up above your 21, base on your 21, reach for the 55, dump back down. Now put that in your mind's eye because this is kind of what I was thinking with this um, with I, with this idea this morning and this is really the best that I can come up with for the bulls um, right now everything else to me says down but it you know it for, for, for the purposes of being thorough and offering up both sides let's look at this right here Okay, so again, this is the only other time right here in the almost 10 year history of Bitcoin that we've ever had this exponential cross. Again, the exponential cross is the 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 reason why it's um it's powerful and has weight within the market is not because it's some sort of like magical mystical, you know, cross, uh, like the death cross, you know, pe people always talking about that. But what it does signify and what I am a huge believer in is that it's telling you what the bots and the algorithms are likely doing. And to me, this this is telling me very likely that they're intensifying their cell programs and they're becoming very, very aggressive as we gain momentum for the downside. Okay, now let's just recap this price action over here. It looks pretty damn similar now, doesn't it? You have the you have the cross right here, dump, consolidation, pump to your yellow, one, yellow 21, dump again a little bit lower. Yes, it was more aggressive in 2014. So again, you can't analyze these dillies, you know, one-to-one -one in a historical sense. That's very misleading to whoever's doing that. I know that there's several, you know, technical analysts out there saying, well, we did, well, we did this on this day in, in, in this era. Well, no, it doesn't quite work like that, but this is why I do use indicators so that I can kind of like smooth out price action over time. Okay, now without getting off too far off track, after that we pump back up again above your yellow 21, reach for your green 55, dump back down, find your find your uh, local low right near the uh, right near the dilly body of this former low right here, and then put in a major fucking bull trap right here. And guess what? Also, we have this to look at today as well as with the current price action. Oh, sorry about this. Okay, it's a little bit a uh, little bit convoluted here. Let me um 
yeah, it's uh, yeah, a little bit convoluted here. Let me just get rid of this. All right, we can just get rid of uh, both of these. Okay, but here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing is that now, look at this, guys. We had we put in a nice bear flag over here, a bro broadening wedge bear flag, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Doesn't matter to me. You don't get points for the right word. You get points for the right, you know, the the right. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, you know, <laughs> trading styles based of based off, you know, uh, where you're breaking or breaking or not breaking this formation. Anyways, to me, this is extremely similar with what we have going on in the current price action, and uh, and that being, we have perhaps some sort of a bull trap being put in over here, where we do test the upper the upper uh, resistance trend line of this. Um, uh, of this uh, bear flag formation before selling back down to your ultimate low right over here, which again would very likely equate with that 45 to 4400 region. Now I do have some things pointing a little bit lower than that uh, than that region, um, so fair enough. I will talk about that in just a little bit. But again, going back on over here, you know, you see the bear flag right here. You see the bear flag right here. Same sort of price. Act I mean, just take everything off. Same sort of goddamn price action going the whole way through. So if we do start pumping back up the 20, the yellow 21 exponential, I will probably take a little bit of a preliminary long position or at least I wouldn't be cash at that point um so again, this, you know, again, going back off this and making the, we're making assumptions here, making major assumptions that this is even right, but this is the best that I can find for like a short term bullish scenario right now. Um, until that actually, you know, in, until we actually break this range one way, or the, one way or the other, there's really not much else to be said about it. And so we can play rope it up in this fucking range for quite some time. We've already been in it for about four weeks and we can certainly take it or about three weeks actually. And we can certainly stay in it for another, you know, another few weeks um, as there's not really like an apex here. I mean, I mean, get, I guess you could say, you know, starting like sometime next week, it's going to start to get a little bit full. But um, but again, you know, I don't want to be caught in a bad position as this thing kind of whips around. So with that said, with that said, um, you know, that does imply that, you know, it kind of it kind of goes very synonymous with our idea over here that as long as we're below this blue box territory right here, this is extremely bearish. We're essentially we essentially have no chain of behavior, to be quite clear. No chain of behavior means, well, <laughs> well, the same behaviors keep on playing out. And uh, and and the way that I look at it, especially on your higher time frames and the eight hours, the one that I've been keeping a big eye on is um, is that your exponentials are really agreeing with this idea as well. Your exponentials are actually signaling um, some uh, some some very bad crosses right around here, and I just want to kind of point out the validity of this cross. That's your yellow twenty-one and your green fifty-five. Pretty much every time we've gotten a cross on this, it's actually led to a pretty damn big move. You do get some fake outs here and there, but overall, it's been pretty damn consistent. So I've had my eyes on this one, and uh, this one is did just cross to the downside, to be quite clear. So again. Um, you know that's the best that I can come up with with for the bulls in the in the more immediate time uh, the more the more immediate uh, future. However, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, everything else is bearish right now. There's there's quite literally I, I I'm really really struggling to to come up with both sides of this. Uh, the weekly is fucking wrecked. Uh, look, <laughs> it's fucking wrecked. Sorry guys, I can't be too loud today as uh, we do have a sleeping mermaid in the background over here. Um, and uh, the week, I mean, if the weekly ends here or lower, this just you know this just look looks like a reactionary bounce off your off your cyan to uh, 100 exponential right here and then complete failure of it. Now when you have that, it's very um the you know the the big deal with this oh, what I should say what I what I should communicate over here is that um, is that this is telling you that this is you know it's just, it's just another sign that this is not your low right here this is not your market shifting market cycle you know changing low right here I mean first things first you have you have, you have very little volume on this so there's very little participation within this rally on top of that you know once it gets sold into well <laughs> well then you know when you come back and test your lows um, after putting in a potential low it typically leads to new lows in in, in my experience. So again, this is just kind of the market cycles taking over, um, in, in, um, in, in my opinion. Now going over here, I just want to also talk about this, the reason why this was unlikely to be your market shifting maneuver over here. Now this green dilly over here on uh, June 29th was on very low volume, but it's what kind of, you know, sparked off this nice little rally. Now what happened on, on, on uh, June 29th, we can actually look at the underlying market fundamentals or market dynamics, I should say. And here's, is a, uh, here's, a sh here's a chart of the shorts on Finex. And look at this. On June 29th, we actually lost about uh, about 3,000 shorts right here. A shit ton of shorts in a very short amount of in a very short amount of time. No pun intended. My point with this is is that that rally was sparked off most likely by shorts closing. And shorts closing is really not the way that I want my market shifting. Um, 
uh, 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 Dilly to kind of be sparked off by. I want to see it. I want to see it sparked off by legitimate buying, not just by shorts closing. So, so what it looks like to me is, um, is that this was, you know, I don't want to say doomed from the start. You know, nothing's ever 100%. But there's there's a lot of warning signs, and I feel like. Um, and I feel like, you know, despite what a lot of people were saying on, on YouTube, Twitter and uh, TradingView, um, I think there is I, I do strongly believe and I hope that I was very consistent with with communicating this that, you know, there is very little t reason to believe that we were um, that 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 we were kind of switching this upwards and onwards here. Now, is it still possible? Yes. I mean, as long as we're within this bear flag formation, I mean, you can I've seen bear flags break up to the upside before. It certainly does happen. It's very, very rare, but it does happen. Um, you know, maybe if Trump came out tomorrow and said, hey. We're not using that fucking USD shitcoin anymore. We're using Bitcoins. We're using that magic internet money. I've heard about it online. It's good. <laughs> um, so again, until we actually do something like that, uh, I really don't see any, you know, any sort of shift in market in the overall market cycle sh um, changing. Um, even more to that point, you know, if we were going to play this inverted head and shoulders, which again was not even an inverted head and shoulders, despite what, <laughs> despite what Reddit might have told you. Um, it was it, it you know you want to see it kind of break out right here instead we got a, a clear rejection and then a stop hunt uh aka liquidity pool um you know dynamic going on right here and then price action just force the other way just your classic 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 um uh what's it called uh scheme right there so again Maybe scheme is not the best word to use. Oh, looks like I'm about to get uh, wicked out of this uh, this trade over here. Okay, do it to me. Just put that red dildo on my asshole and let me scream to mom. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, hey, Jen Ree, lock knocking on the door. What's up, Malen? How you doing, man? Uh, Crypto Hash says, office of a true Bitcoin bill. <laughs> Billionaire, I want to be quadrillionaire, man. Uh, bits, bits on bits says uh, Rick Lewis or anyone. Wait, uh, where did Mitch go? Crown is cool, but just wondering where where did Jesus man is. I have no idea, man. I hope that he's still alive though. I will say that. All right, <laughs> that couch is scary. What are you talking about, man? What are you implying about my office over here? Weekly with TD Sequential. Yeah, DJ Me Pop School. This is uh, this is something that a lot of people are going to be talking about right now. And, um, and, and yeah, we, we might as well talk about it because, you know, pe everyone's going to be going on about this. But we need to talk about about the validity of this. So I'm sure everyone on good old TradingView and Twitter and you know, all, the, all the heroes of the, of the cryptocurrency world are probably looking at this and they're saying, Crown, we have a red nine on the titty sequential. We will be going upwards and onwards. This is a reversal formation. Well, there's a problem with this. There's a problem with this. Let me explain. The TD sequential is, <laughs> it's a very misunderstood indicator as, you know, if, if this really did, if this worked just blindly, then every fucking, you know, every fucking pleb who looked on, who looked on TradingView with this indicator would be goddamn rich. Instead, they're just posting on Reddit in, in TradingView and, uh, <laughs> and crying to mom. No, I won't even finish that sentence. But my point with this is, no, this is actually not your traditional bottoming nine. What you want in a bottoming nine, what your, what your perfect nine count looks like to the downside, indicating that perhaps perhaps reversal is you want to have the low of your red nine trading below the low of your red seven. And also to add validity to that, you want your, the, the low of your red eight trading below the low of your red six. We have neither of those right here. In fact, we have both our red eight and our red nine turning us down in almost a rejections fa fashion. So with this said, yes, we do have another, you know, 36 hours or so until the daily daily or sorry, the weekly daily closes. So a lot can happen in that range for sure. I always want to leave, leave it up to possibility of you know, 36 hours is the goddamn eternity in cryptocurrency, no doubt about it. But the way it is right now, this would be this this would be more likely a continuation. And I'd say probably the more accurate way of reading this is if again, if it did finish here or lower, is that this is probably actually a red. This is actually um, this is a one-off green one, and this is going to be your 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 uh, the start of your of your next red trend. So again, sometimes uh, sometimes these are deliberately painted by you know bigger accounts by you know the whales that be um, because you know they know that they, they know a lot of retailers are looking at this sort of thing blindly because Tone Vase is on is on the internet and a lot of people listen to him and uh, and he sounds very smart. He doesn't really trade himself, which is <laughs> I won't get into that. But uh, but he is but he is on my couch, so I like that. All right, good tone. Anyway, anyways, um, so again, going on going going off over there. That's kind of my um, that's kind of my uh, limitations of that that I wanted to offer up. Also, let's go to our three day our three day again coming back down to your two hundred exponential your purple line right here. 
just not good, man. This just looks like a reactionary bounce off of your 200 exponential right here that you had going on from here to here. Just again, an algorithm, a bot type thing going on there, a bot type dynamic. At the end of the day, it makes, um, it, it just makes this look like, you know, that was, th this was just another, another air of distribution as we get ready, gearing up for another move lower. Could we bounce again off the 200 exponential? Yeah. But if it is weaker than this bounce right here, uh, I'd be very, 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 very comfortable in saying that we're probably going to get a nice big big massive girthy red tight dildo sorry dilly <laughs> candlestick <laughs> down your bullish angus um right around i mean again that that, that would be kind of your catalyst for the move to 4400 i'd imagine again um Okay, so I'm gonna get over here to the comments see what we got going on. Uh, let's see, don't swear so much, dude. I apologize, I will not fucking swear anymore. I apologize. <laughs> I just don't, I, what do you say to that? Don't swear so much, dude. Okay, mom. <laughs> Sarthrock, hey Sarthrock, what's up? Uh, Crown, don't mind me asking this on the live stream, but hey, sure. Uh, hey, man, anything goes here. I'm I'm happy to entertain any sort of conversation, even if you're gonna, you know, regale me in the comments. Please do, please, please do. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, but since I just joined back, uh, Karis sharing a small story of background in crypto and trading. Genuinely asking, uh, uh, cousin Press so far. Yeah, man. Okay, so Sarthrock, if you're not familiar with me or or who I am and where I come from, well, first things first, and my name's Crown. It's a pleasure to meet you. Also, sort of my um, what you're more interested in, most likely, is my sort of unique background and my my unique take on this market. Now, I started out as um, well. I started out. I, I began my trading career as a as a market maker in equity options on the floor of the New York Stock, of the New York Stock Exchange Arca, and uh, and then I later moved on to the, to the to the Chicago Board of Options Exchange. The reason why I think that that really gave me a great experience is because when I was on the floor, like in an actual pit environment, you know, being one of those market makers that, well, people, um, people, uh, you know, people always complain about on good old Reddit over there is, is it put me around a lot of extremely successful guys who more importantly had, 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 um, had also continued that and reproduced that success over time. And when I say over time, I mean, you know, 20 years, 30 years, and in one case, 40 years. And these are the kind of people that I want to learn from. Something that I learned early on in my life is that if you ever want to get good on something you want to, um, or at least, or at least I found the best way to get good fast is to get around people who, who are where you want to be or where I want to be. So that's kind of where, who I sought out over there. Um, as a kid, I used to go down to the floor of the, of the Picos as well. Um, and, uh, and kind of, and kind of be a, a clerk there. I don't know if that, that doesn't really count, but cause I wasn't really, really like actually trading, but being a market maker and seeing the other side of things, you know, cause people are always complaining about these people. Um, people are always complaining about these people. People, uh, the, the retailers are always complaining about the market makers, you know, using dirty tactics. And I can say, and I can say from experience as someone who can verify this, that, that that's very, uh, misguided and it's very unfounded. Market makers are in a, in a, and a straight up competition with every, you know, with, with all themselves and we're all fucking whores. So whenever someone does say, whenever someone does say, uh, you know, um, these, these dirty market makers are just manipulating the market. Well, that's very impossible to do because, uh, because there, there's a lot of us and we're all competing against each other. So good fucking luck with that. Anyways, that's kind of where, who I am and where I come from. Then I moved on. Then I said, like I moved on to Chicago and traded, uh, and traded over there, uh, which put me uh, uh, around some, some, some very impressive people as well. So a couple of billionaires actually, which was, uh, quite uh, quite enlightening. I also met the Wolf of Wall Street, but like not the actual not Jordan Jordan Belfort, but like the guy from uh, who like his his Chicago doppelganger, if if, if you want to call him that. Pretty fucking cool guy. Um, so yeah, great experiences. But at the end of the day, I decided um, you know I'd rather just do magic internet money because well, it gives you a lot more freedom, doesn't it? Anyways, I'm back on over here. Let's see what do we got. Uh, Peter North says, "You sure about that? I will film it." Ooh, you, <laughs> Peter North. Hey, speak of the devil. Do you know this place? Have you been here? <laughs> have you been? Have you been? Do you recognize Recognize these people, Peter North. Um, <laughs> but fair enough, man. Fair enough. Good to have you back in here, Peter North. It's uh, it's a pleasure. I've always missed you. Rick Lewis says very good stuff. Just got to keep up. Uh, he is fast. Yeah, man. I, I do apologize about that. Um, my, I do apologize about that, guys. You know, please do. You guys be the ones to ask me if um, you know if anything's not clear. If you want me to kind of back up something, or or if you do have like a like a counterpoint, please do bring it up. I'm happy to talk about anything, um, anything and everything. Uh, as you know, I really do feel like it kind of brings about a, the better discussion. And something, you know, I'm gonna be wrong. You know, I'm gonna be wrong sometimes. Um, 
and um, maybe we have experts in other areas and it gives us a, a more well-rounded discussion also guys keep in mind um this is this is unlike my uh this, the streams on my channel in the way that um in the way that you know i can read everyone's comment over here once they disappear from my visual view i can't see them anymore so if you do want me to read your comment please do just uh j just add it at the bottom and i'll get to it uh thomas cobb says crown hey what's up thomas cobb by the way crown i just joined your trading course today and it's so legit hey awesome man uh hard, <laughs> hard to believe anything uh could be better than your streams but it is it is so nice to have step-by-step -step focus and instruction thank you hey man my pleasure again i feel a little bit dirty talking about this on someone else's stream i apologize about this but hey man you know i'm i'm glad that you're enjoying it i always want to say that and of course mr thomas cobb i want to say do not do not hesitate if you have any sort of questions at all whatsoever to hit me up i'm always here on discord man i'm, I'm constantly available on discord essentially so again man massive massive thank you and i look forward to uh to talking with you to talk to talking about it with you soon all right so Th uh sarthok says uh rick lewis sounds good love the pace holy moly on medaf soaking it in awesome man yeah i just took a little bit of caffeine myself this morning and uh feeling good man i haven't had it in a little while so uh so it's it's working i feel like i didn't get enough sleep last night either but that's okay <laughs> we have we have peds in the form of uh in the form of legal caffeine starbucks great uh peter north says uh what you <laughs> what you talking my words there <laughs> what you talking my words there more swearing please crown says mike what's up Michael? how you doing man Michael, a, a very highly uh, distinguished member of the cave a very good trader in, in his own regards and my god man I'm glad that you're here. Uh, Thomas Cobb says, and don't forget to wash behind your ears, Crown. <laughs> yes, indeed. I've been a bad boy. I've been a very bad boy. Do you want to spank me? No. Yes. No. Uh, what? No handshake, Crown? Give him a good old handshake. Do the, do the handshake. Yes. Let me just... <laughs> no, sorry. Of course not. Of course not. We all have respect here. Uh, Hugh Myron says, uh, Kraken said they will list all coins on CoinMarketCap, so I bought all of them and lost my money. What do? That's right, guys. Listen... <laughs> Kraken would never lie to you. No, of course. I think they were having a little bit of a joke, and, I, and, and Hugh Myron is a, is a funny motherfucker in his in his own right. Um, but but yeah, I think you're taking a stab probably at Coinbase's uh, tweet this morning, which was a little bit interesting in the way that they worded it. Now, wasn't it? A little bit interesting in the way that they worded it. As uh, let me just check on this position over here. Are we are we finding the, some sort of support down here? What's going on over here? Uh, we got a nice little line chart going on. Hey, you don't see these too often. Hey, you got a fucking gap in uh, price action. You really don't see those too often in um in cryptocurrencies. But yeah, we uh, probably. Hmm, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna make it out this one alive. I should probably just get out now. But yeah, I'm just gonna leave that market in order in there and uh, and and let the chips fall where they may. Again, this is just just a straight up risk reward. Just a straight up risk reward trade. Nothing more to it. Uh, really, that's just uh, that, that's just all it is. A uh, little bit of boredom thing um, to say to say the most. Uh, off kilter concepts says, says he traded an apple for a snack pack in the second grade, and here we are today. That's right, baby. Start them young. Just buy low, sell high, or sell high, buy, or or sell or buy high and sell higher. Uh, that always works too. Uh, let's see. Thomas Cobb says, and can you talk about seventy four? Um, <laughs> Can you talk 74.543% lower? I mean, talk faster. I mean, just dance for us. Crown. <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting you know ever since starting live streams man it's been very um enlightening to see uh some of the demands that people can make on free content uh out there in the world but again you know that's why that's why i love my crew man it's just such such good people it really attracts these high quality people that i'm so goddamn proud of and uh the conversations are so fucking good a lot of the time man i, I really do appreciate that and i really do I, I feel like i become a better trader for that and i hope that that's you know i hope that that, that people have found value off that as well uh dj me pops says crown could trade a paper clip for a house Hey, I've actually heard about someone doing that. Is that real? <laughs> so did she just make up? But I've actually heard about someone doing that. Uh, Sarthrox says, Crown, haven't received so many direct responses on a stream in three months. Uh, solemnly swear to follow you every day. Hey, man, that's my thing, man, is I, I really do believe that everyone has something valuable to say. So I always want to be engaging with everyone. Now, again, I want to remind everyone that, you know, uh, uh, as soon as your comments disappear from the visual range, I can no longer see them. So if you want me to read them, I'm happy to just, just re add them at the bottom of the, uh, or, or just read at, re add them and I'll certainly get to them. So yeah, man. Um, yeah, man, that's, you know, I'm more than happy to do that as you know, what, what, what else is the fucking point of having a live stream? If I wanted to, uh, if I, if I don't want to talk to anyone, I just, I just post up a video, right? All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Bitcoin. Hey, Rocky, how the fuck you doing, man? How the fuck you doing, Mr. Rocky? By the way, guys, Bitcoin Ascent is Mr. Rocky Palumbo himself, the man, the myth, the expert, the Bitcoin legendary expert of, uh, of all this great technology. So say hello. Uh, when selling my soul to the devil. <laughs> oh, my God. How are you going to break that one, man? <laughs> 
<laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, we're getting desperate now, man. I wonder what's, what it's going to be like around if we get below 5,000. Just saying, just saying. I'm not saying that we're going to get there, but you have to wonder. You know, you really have to wonder. Uh, Melantan says, uh, reaction off the blue box seems to be getting weaker and seems that uh, that long quite uh, that longs lost quite a bit within the past few hours. Looks like distribution of me, um, but I don't know what you think. All right, well, let's go check it out. We have lost a significant amount of longs in the... Um, yeah, Melan, good fucking eyes, Melan, good fucking eyes. We've lost a lot. We've lost uh, about 2,000... Uh, yeah, about 2,000 longs in the last, um, you know, in the last half day uh, from here to here. So, yes, I do I do kind of read this as distribution near and more importantly, uh, more importantly, more importantly, oh my God, crown, slow down, take a fucking deep breath. More importantly, more importantly, Malen, Malen oh my God, man. How do I speak? I don't know. Um, is that, you know, it's happening right at this resistance right here. So I do I believe that you've identified that properly and that it's most likely distribution. And if this is most likely distribution, or in this case, redistribution, if we need to accurately coin this term, then it looks like we're actually gearing up for, for a move down to the downside. Now, I want to offer this back up one more time. Um, again, taking everything off of or actually, no, we need it on. Um, but again, look at the bear flag right here. Look at this bear flag going on right here. We've had two tests of this lower support trend line right here. Now, okay, I'm just kind of spitballing ideas right here. I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I do want to kind of be thorough with what's going on over here. It, we did have in 2014 b before this major bull trap, I think that we were kind of right. I think that we might be right around here on this second touch. So that's what I was a little bit thinking. I wanted to try something. I've been taking a long trade in a long, in a, in a goddamn long time. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, that's, that's what I think could be going on right here. It could be going on again, you know, very careful language could be going on. Um, but if we do break the lower support of the, of our, of our bear flag, then it's very likely that we do kind of accelerate to the downside. I've been saying this for quite some time that if that, as soon as we, uh, as soon as we start closing dillies below this horizontal area right here at 60, 40, and I'm being a little bit generous here, it actually is a little bit higher, um, into the blue box territory into the blue box territory but as soon as we kind of you know uh close close below this area right here i believe that we will really start accelerating to the downside quite quite quickly so again going back on over here nothing uh again there there's there's nothing bullish about this formation right here even though i am long it's just it's just a pier straight up nothing nothing else to it just a straight up um uh what's it called a uh, uh risk reward play in fact you know it just kind of um well, do I want to do that? Well, let's go over here to Max and see what's going on. Yeah, Max, Max has a. Uh, we could get back up to twenty bucks pretty easily. All right, back now over here to the uh, to the comments and let's see what we got. Uh, um, um, um. So yeah, ex excellent, excellent, excellent uh, analysis, Malin. Uh, DJ Me Popsicle says, yeah, someone did that. There's a TED Talk on it. That is fucking amazing, man. <laughs> I think he was Canadian. Well, goddamn. Uh, but I'm probably wrong, and he was Mexican. <laughs> He's American. Well, fair enough, man. Who cares where he's from, man? That's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive, nonetheless. Uh, Marcos H says, "Can you take a look at uh, ADA BTC?" Yeah, man. We can go take a look at uh, at Cardano over here. All right, good old Cardano on uh, Bitcoin. You, well, let's go look at uh, Trex. And what do we got? We got a nice little rally going on off, off here, off this nice, uh, this nice rea another reaction off this uh, low over here at around uh, 2000 Satoshi. So last time that we talked about this, we talked about how, you know, it doesn't, nothing about this looks good to me, to be quite clear. Nothing about this looks good to me. However, you know, it, you know, um, it did defend this support right here, which, um, which has led to this nice bounce so far. There has been some, some good volume on this pop, on this pop. So I do like that. But again, as long as, you know, we already Respecting this area's resistance, this horizontal area at 2200. So the 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 thing that kind of uh, throws me off, or sorry, the thing that that makes me um, very apprehensive about this uh, ADA cone over here, is that we're getting a lot of very bad crosses on your exponentials. You got the death cross right here, and you're about to get you know that 100 to, to the downside of the 200 right there. Um, very nasty indeed. Now here's the thing, though. Here's the thing with with Cardano. As long as it's holding above, as long as it's closing daily dilly, dillies above this area right here, two thousand Satoshi, it's technically okay. I mean, technically okay. Let me explain this. It's technically can still be uh, interpreted as some sort of a major consolidation phase going on like this. Does that mean that I like it or that there's not warning signs in here? Absolutely not. I mean, I I <laughs> I don't really like what's going on here. But um, but it did defend here and it did have a good reaction. Let's go into the lower time frames to check it out. And and over here, yeah, it, do, it does look okay. It does look okay. 
but here's here's what I want to see from ADA to kind of uh, to kind of say that it's in the short term got something something okay, and that is and and this and it's this right here. As long as we're closing uh, hourlies above uh, twenty one hundred, I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm okay with it. I don't love it, uh, but I, it's you know you can respect that. Maybe it's a little bit. I mean, it's an ugly flag, but maybe it could be a flag. It could kind of find some support around here. And if it did hold again, if it did hold above this area right here, I'm okay with it. Um, but overall, you know, the overall picture is that you know I can still make the case for. Consolidation, but it's it's it's. I really do not like revisiting your lows right there. Uh, you did have significant divergence on your oscillators, so that is a good sign. That is certainly a good sign. But look at this on your RSI. You are um. Oh, there we go. I just got filled. We are kind of uh you know uh, just just fucking around the neutral zone, and uh, and that's going to be the next big test. If we can if we can start if we can here, here's the big point. If we can close dailies above this area right here, twenty three fifty, then yeah, we might have uh, we might have something to be excited about. But at but at the current moment in time. Um, I think it's way too early to tell and god damn it now I'm just feeling it like a complete moron for getting out of this position because well have we have we done what I wanted to see yeah we did man Jesus someone just someone must have just market bought uh, some contracts over there all right so uh, so back now over here to the comments and let's see okay uh Melenten says reaction off the oh wait nope just read that uh mo 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 what's up dj uh pug delicious says man this chat is censoring me so so hard you can't censor the pug delicious raw over there how can how dare you how how fucking dare you pug delicious raw is <laughs> is maybe one of the funniest people i've met uh through the interwebs so <laughs> always has me rolling man uh <laughs> Ha ha ha, R.I.P. Time for some chicken crown. Uh, yeah, man, I think I'm going to have a rotisserie chicken today. Good thinking, DJ Meat Popsicle. Good thinking. Uh, Tyler says, hey, by the way, what's up, Tyler? How much wood would a woodchuck chuck? Would, could a, oh, God damn it. <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker. Uh, Puck Delicious says, there are some well-defined patterns for chucking wood. Uh, Nahek, hey, what's up, Nahek? How you doing, man? Long time no see. Morning Crown, have a great day. Thank you. I really do appreciate that, man. I wish that you have the most phenomenal day possible as well. Sarth Sarthok says, uh, Crown on NZT48, uh, brilliant pace. Thanks, man. I don't know what NZT48 is, but fair enough. Yeah, man, let's go look at Ethereum USD for you. Let's go Let's go look at that. As I do, I think it is I think it is worthwhile to kind of pay attention to all the big, uh, all the big market cap cones over here. And Ethereum, I'm gonna take off this area right here. I don't think that it's very valid, and I think, and I think it's better represented by these horizontal areas. Even though they are a shit ton of them um, going along here, I do believe that they they are all valid, so to say. And uh, with that said, well, maybe we can get rid of this one. Well, no, we need that one as well. Um, with that said, with that said, it does seem similar to me that that Ethereum, similar to Bitcoin, is creating some sort of. Uh, some sort of a rising channel bear flag formation as well as long as we're respecting this area we have a very yeah we have we, we have a very well defined area like this okay i do like that and we are kind of fucking around our our support right here fair enough so as long as we're closing four hour dillies above uh let's call it 429 on finex um it's technically okay it's technically okay but i don't like this formation right here this looks weak to me do we have any sort of indication of a loss of momentum we actually do we actually do we're losing a lot of momentum to the downside right here so this is so your so your oscillators are suggesting a pop your stochastics did just cross back up to the upside after defending the neutral zone so i like that as well so both of those things are suggesting a little bit of a pop here you do have your your next level of resistance right here at about 440 and a half above there is about uh, 450 and above there is about 461 and then obviously the top trend line of this uh, of this flag formation would be coming somewhere around 500 bucks. I'm not saying it's going to get there, but I'm just saying you know it's certainly possible. Uh, as long as, as long as here's here's the big point. Here's the big point. As long as we're as long as we're closing uh, four hour dillies above this area right here again, 429 on Finex then it's it's technically safe um but again this you know a, a bear flag is typically a, a bearish continuation pattern i've seen them certainly break up to the upside before definitely possible so that's why i wait for confirmation but the second i get a four hour dilly close below this area right here i get the fuck out of this buterol cone all right back onto the comments over here uh joey i says how accurate is it to look back and pull ta from four years ago when the number of investors in crypto was so much smaller and the type of investor was quite different still very accurate to compare okay joey so this is something i hear a lot man this is something that i hear a lot and i'm glad that you brought it up now here's the thing here's the thing you're right you're right there is a lot less people back in that time no doubt about it no doubt about it. you're 100 right about that however 
However, we're still fucking people. And what and what is consistent over time, what has not changed in not just four years, but actually more like, you know, 400,000 years or, or whatever it might be, is human emotions and human psychology. Essentially, we have we have we have conditioning in our in our emotions and in our and in our behaviors from that goes way back, you know, to like our fucking pro, pro, uh, primordial brains, our lizard brains, essentially, that um, that that is, you know, quite literally uh, uh, what, what's the word conditioned within our psyche uh and this is why you see this is why you see market cycles and market trends play out very 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 you know brotherly over time no they do not happen one to one i do not want to represent it like that at all it's certainly not it's not a verbatim pattern if that if that makes sense but what is but what is but but, but what is pretty damn, damn consistent over time and what i've noticed across all trading assets not just magic internet money but also you know equity options uh forex and uh, commodities is that you do have Brotherly characteristics in the way that in the way that um, long-term trends play out. Again, that's likely due to the way that you know our, our uh, the, to it, due to the way that we're conditioned from like a primordial level. You know, going back hundreds of thousands or millions of years. I don't know what the fuck it is, man. Back to dinosaur times. If we were, if you believe that we were around when dinosaurs were around, I don't even fucking know. But my point with this is, is that on top of that, not only on top of that, but 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 it's not necessarily the retail investors that move this market what does typically move the markets in my experience are the bigger accounts the bigger accounts you know who typically run algorithms and bots because they don't they don't have fucking time to be sit around the to, to sit around the the screen all day they, they probably have a life and what they do is they you know they program their bots they program their algorithms with a lot you know very i don't want to say predictable things but very very um very consistent things over time i'll put it that way and that's why i use these indicators like our exponential movement averages and also um you know and also some of our oscillators over here which do show which 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 do show where these algorithms and where these bots have interest within the market and that's what i want to know that's who I, that's who moves the market not the retailers despite what reddit tells you the retailers don't mean shit if you have less than if you have less than like a hundred million dollars you're not doing shit in this market and i and i do apologize about that i'm not trying to trying to come off aggressive or arrogant or anything like that that's not my intention what is my intention is to kind of uh dissolve a lot of the um, a, a lot of the mishaps and a lot of the misleading information out there within this realm, because again, that the <laughs> mom and pop or, or anyone you know, if you if you have less than ten million dollars in the market, you're not you're you're really not making any waves, um, and and really it's it's really up to like fifty million or hundred million where you can start doing things. Um, with that said, so again, you know these algorithms and these, and these bots are programmed. To, to kind of uh, respect the same things over time, and that's that's exactly what I'm looking at over here. So yes, you're right. They don't happen one to one over time, but there is certainly the same psychology going on over time, at least in my experience. And again, I've noticed this throughout multiple trading assets, not just magic and internet money, but you know commodities over over quite literally like you know 50, 60 years. Also, you know equity options, which, which is where I come from, and also of course. Um, uh, Forex as well as you know has plenty of uh, plenty of price action as well. All right, Tim Matthew says you're the only person besides me in crypto that isn't a total d bag. Congrats! Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> We're the only ones. What? <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be someone else who's not, but fair enough, man. Fair enough. I do appreciate that, Mr. Tim Matthews. And hey, pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Now, Heck says, uh, Nahekification. Nah hey, by the way, Nahek, is that is that a, is that like a uh, is that like an ode to Egyptian background? I, I feel like Nahek is, is like something to do with Egyptian, you know, type shit. But please do let me know, man. Maybe I'm just way off over here. All right, so let's check out uh, Ven BTC. This is brutal. All right, well, let's go check it out. Uh, Ven BTC. Oh, and by the way, guys, just for uh, just for full disclosure, I am I, I am out of my position now let me just get rid of this uh this market stop right here and i'm just going to be watching um i'm just going to be watching with you guys maybe i'll put another trade oh we're resolving this to the downside right here accelerating to the downside let's go to the let's go to the higher time frames oh uh oh this this is really big right here guys huge 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 okay so 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 we know we've known that ven chain looked like shit way over here um and over i believe that we talked about it over here i don't know if it was you who brought it up next but someone did it in one of my live streams and we said right over here was kind of like your last big area and once we broke this area you know yes you have support on the way down but it, it ain't stopping it ain't stopping that fucking train um so again this to me looks like a very fucked up version of an inverted cup and handle and the measure move does take us down to this area right here we've been talking about this for quite some time so again i don't i don't want to sound like mr arrogant saying like you know i told you so i knew it because uh, that's not not my intention but what i do want to say is is how i got this so that you can reproduce it for yourself uh yes this is indeed brutal because not only you know not only did we confirm this you know you know weeks ago over here 
but now we're now we're actually you know confirming it in, in current in current price action in a very 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 slap in the face way. If this daily dilly does close below thirty six or sorry thirty two five hundred, then there is very you know yes we do have a measure move taking us around here. There is a little bit of support, but it ain't you know it ain't strong. It ain't fucking strong. And all of this looks like right here. All of this looks like to me is just distribution. Uh, the people the, the smart money was accumulating down here, and they distribute on your bullish buttholes right over here. Um, again, you know yes we do have a measure move taking us right here maybe there's a little bit of a stutter step maybe even a maybe even some some upside after that but you know i don't see any sort of any sort of any sort of indication of strong support until you know a little bit at this area at about 9500 and uh this area right here which would be which which should be you know decent at around 6000 ish area but again, here uh, you know, key point. And again, I you know, I, I want to show you how to kind of recreate this this thing, this sort of thing for yourself. And whenever you see this rolling over formation like this on low volume, that is a signal. That is a very clear signal of distribution. And when people are distributing, well, what comes after that? The markdown. So you had your first kind of markdown right here. Your throwback uh, into this into this resistance right here, confirmed as resistance as your at your six one eight Fibonacci retracement, which is which is quite aggressive selling to be very fair. And then we just saw acceleration to the downside as we get our next mark down right now um so again taking out this if we do confirm below this support right here which i, I mean for all intents and purposes we we very likely will but there are a lot of there are a lot of, a lot of hours left in the day um then uh then you know it's the, the, the this, this is the problem with going to the moon it's fun it's fun over here but you don't build up any support on the way and this is this is essentially the result over time so again man um you know i i, I salute you I, I wish the best for you but just you know keep that in mind for next time because uh because that you know we i, I feel like we've been talking about that for, for for quite some time and uh and hopefully you know um uh, ho hopefully you're not you're not caught in that. All right, uh, let's see. DJ Meepopska says uh, sh uh, should look at my line crown. You you, sh you would have stayed in the trade. Um, I shall name you a Ron Burgundy. God damn it, lol, Baxter. Wait, which line? Uh, which line? DJ Meepopska, did you post it in my Discord? Um, let me go check this out. Uh, do I have you over here? Um, okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, hmm. I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't see any sort of uh, post from you. So fair enough, man. Um, but fair enough. You know, if, if you do want me to look at it, just post it in the Discord, bro. Uh, let's see, let's see. I wanted to hear him say it both, though. Uh, Would have been nice. Again, guys, once the comments uh, disappear, I can't read them again. So just repost them at the bottom, and I'm happy to look at them. All right. Uh uh anyone here like new tropies new tropics yeah man go go have yourself some of that uh some of that alpha brain <laughs> um no man i just i just eat clean and uh and that seems to work pretty damn well too but yeah i used siltep back in the day siltep was pretty good um but you know any any time you kind of boost up your brain with these new tropics uh you know there's there's always like an equal and opposite reaction some somewhere down the road is is what i always is kind of always been my experience with them uh i like hydroponics <laughs> Fair enough. A different type of nootropic, but also very valued as well. I prefer Bit <laughs> Bitcoin. -ect. Good old Bit Bitcoin wrecked. Um, let's see. Word. <laughs> hey, what's up, Derek M? How you doing, man? How you doing, Mr. Derek? I like cocoa. Oh, like cocoa puffs. Uh, are you a man? Uh, slightly, but I don't identify as one. I like honey. <laughs> Where is this going? I'm pretty certain Adam and Steve were roaming around with dinosaurs and rock. <laughs> That's just mean, dude. That's just mean. <laughs> TJ Me Pop School, who also sexually identifies as a Bitcoin ATM. By the way, if we have any Bitcoin ATMs in the house, please do meet my main meet meet my man DJ Me Pop School over here. He is a great Bitcoin ATM. Very, 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 very high quality. He'll take you out to dinner. May might even call you back. He'll buy you some seafood and eat you out. Just kidding. Uh, he won't do that. Um, <laughs> Joey, Joey says, thank you. Hey man, no problem. No problem. And again, Joey, you know, I, I'm glad that you brought that up, man. I always want to be encouraging of, um, of, of criticism or, or sorry, uh, not, not this like, you know, like a legitimate, like, like a, like a, like an aggressive criticism, but like, you know, uh, but like someone not necessarily agreeing or, or anything like that, because, you know, then we can kind of come to a better understanding together. Uh, Ken, we says crown the inverse hegemony. <laughs> Everything is an inverse covenant. <laughs> I know. You know, it's very funny, man. It's very funny because, um, because when Hagen when Hagen re hey, <laughs> sorry it's so fucked up Hagen re was calling this a cup and handle right here and I was saying no no man we have an inverse cup and handle right here this is not a cup and handle at all whatsoever because he kept on just saying you can retrace more and more guys it's just a, it's just a six one eight retracement oh sorry it's just a seven eight six retracement oh it's just it's just an eight eight six retracement oh it's just a full retracement wait <laughs> you can't have that. <laughs> 
wait, you can't have that, can you? Uh, so yeah, man, fair enough. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Melenten says, uh, where, sh uh, where short Ven can finally upgrade my cardboard, my, my cardboard, uh, house. Can you short Ven? I don't think that, that, I don't think it's on a shortable exchange. Um, yeah, it is on Finex actually. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't have it charted on Finex, but you know, if, if you were, it, here's the thing about shorting guys, and, and I'm going to say something that's going to piss you guys off, but you know, the best place to short is when it's not that obvious. The best place to short would have been on your break, on your confirmation of break right here of this inverse cup and handle, um, which we did talk about quite some time ago um but i mean like if you do you know if you want to be if you want to be aggressive here where where does it make sense to short over here my problem with that is i always want to be shorting near uh near resistance so it makes my, my my risk management easier and i can you know have a good risk reward play going on right here we don't quite have that as we've really accelerated past this uh this support right here um or sorry now it's it's likely to be a resistance so it's kind of out of no man's land. It's a little bit too far gone for me. Um, too far gone. It sounds like the title of a movie. All right, back now over here to uh, to the comments and let's see. Uh, Nahek says, no, haha, I was 12 searching for a CS 1.6 name and I just wrote Nahek and liked it. Well, <laughs> well, fair enough, man. Fair enough. Now I randomly use it for some accounts. It sounds like Californication, man, which which reminds me of the Red Hot Chili Peppers and I absolutely fucking love them because, well, I'm from California. Uh, Lazy Celtic Boy says, hey, Crown, what's up? Hey, how's you, how you doing, man? How you doing? I'm glad. Hey, thank you for asking, man. I didn't have enough sleep last night but i have coffee so performance enhancing drugs on my side i hope that you're doing well as well man uh rocky says yes i programmed computers with punch cards but i didn't walk with dinosaurs <laughs> rocky has some fucking great one-liners man you got you just gotta love them man just gotta love them images are in the cave all right let me go check it out i can bring it up on screen over here too Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna bring it up on screen just really quickly, guys. Uh, just really quickly over here. So this is this is what um th this is what DJ Me Popsicle wanted to share. And is this valid? So I'm curious what what this is coming from. I'm uh, I'm just I'm just curious like why this? I've I've never some I've never seen someone represent uh, support and resistance this way. Um, so I'm just uh, I'm just curious of the validity of it. You are pretty <laughs> you're pretty damn in danger over here though. But yeah, man, I'm uh, I'm, I'm curious myself. Again, the the TD, the titty sequential over here is not um is not your picture perfect uh, formation. Let me just uh, get this screen back on over here before I show something embarrassing on my uh, screen on my <laughs> on my stream over here. All right, so back now over here to the uh, to the comments and let's see what we got going okay um 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 moon up the like people yeah do a little bit of moon mooning on the on the likes but i don't mean pulling down your pants i mean you know clicking the button but you don't have to if you don't want to if you want to regale me in the comments you're more than welcome to as well man i i, I encourage you to, to call me all sorts of bad names all right uh nick sucks todd's <laughs> How did you get that name through on YouTube, man? This is a pretty like uh, liberal platform. I feel like they wouldn't like that too much, <laughs> but that one just caught my eyes. Maybe it's a little bit of a uh, Freudian slip. Uh, Nehex says, uh, Sarthrock, uh, check out uh, Serge uh, Fago. Fag <laughs> Am I five or what? Uh, on Medium, he, his articles are extremely interesting. Uh, hey, what's up, Crypto Hash? How you doing, man? Night guys, wake me up if Bitcoin tanks out of nowhere. Well, fair enough. I'll send you the I'll send you the Crown signal. Uh, well, I might. I'm pretty sure you'd enjoy them, Crown. Um, I'll leave them in the Miss channel. Yeah, of course, man. Of course, that's what it's for, man. And uh, massive, massive thank you, man. That's why we have such a great community, man. Just always sharing good information. Uh, I probably would actually. All good. Uh, got it. Uh, Marco Sage says, "Power Bitcoin." If you have, the, if you have the time, hey man, this is this is what it's fucking for, man. This is what it's fucking for. Um, okay, let's go over here to uh, POWR BTC on Trex. I'd like to look at it on Trex. And actually, I guess I have charted this thing before. And what are we doing over here? Is the um, is the real question now? Let's. We need to go to a lower time frame as this is a more new coin cone over here. And uh, I do see something a little bit, a little bit interesting to begin with. Um, but is it legit? Is it legit? Is a question. Are we? The question is: Are we working on some sort of a falling channel coming off of this? Uh, Jesus Christ! This is why I hate these fucking ICOs. This is just all ICO dumping right here, and it gives you these nasty red dildos. To, sorry, red dillies to look at. I apologize about my language. Um, so over here, I, I don't, I don't know if this is accurately represented. It. Sorry, sorry about this, guys. It's just an ugly, you know, it's just, just ugly, for, ugly, ugly, ugly formulated. If that, if that makes sense. Um, but essentially, yeah, we have had a good reaction off this, off this, off this potential bottom right here. I do like the buy volume on this area, so that is significant. And we do, I do believe that this is some sort of consolidation. We do have that fall off in volume uh, scooting down over time. Let's see what our oscillators say. Our oscillators are kind of a green as well. You know, you can see that our RSI is very clearly getting. Better 
back into the in, uh, above the neutral zone right here and playing between the neutral zone and the bullish zone. So I like that as well. You also, you have your stochastics turning um, turning up. It looks or did they? Uh, no, they're, they're they're not turned up just yet. So um, so so that so that is kind of disagreeing with what I'm saying over here. Uh, let's check out what the volume profile says. I'm curious what, what this is going to spit back. And the volume profile is showing the point of control right here, right where price action, I mean, you know, it's obviously a little bit lower, but this this volume profile would suggest a little bit more uh, heavy pressure on price action. Um, but again, you know, the big thing for, you know, of course, you know, here's what you're interested in. The big thing for Power Ledger is that I can't get too excited about this thing until we start closing eight hour dillies above this area right, right here, this area being 6,200. If we can do that, then yes, we might have a nice little run up until, up until this blue box area right here which would look good to me however this this is with the caveat that that this thing must hold above this area right here uh i want to see power ledger hold uh closing dill eight, eight hour dillies above 4200 as long as it does that i do i do like this for some bottoming uh volume down there it, it does look okay and that is some serious participation in this rally and it does stand out um so yeah you might you might have something there but again keep keep your eyes on that level because if we do take out that level then i wouldn't then i would take back my statements right there so as always you know to um two different scenarios. Broussard, Chris Broussard. What's up, man? How you doing? How old are you? And how many years have you been reading charts? I've been reading charts since, I mean, I mean, if you really want to go back into like, if you want to, you know, um, interpret this as, uh, uh, if, if you really want to like be as fucking, you know, uh, strict, strict definition as possible, you could say it back to when I was like 10 or, or sorry, 12, 12 or 13, as I used to go down to the, uh, to the floor of the Pacific stock exchange with, uh, with, with my dad, who was a trader over there. Um, but it wasn't really until, it wasn't really until I was like about 19 or 20 when when um when uh when, when when I really started you know going into it and learning it for myself and doing this as as more of a of, of a professional type thing in a professional type environment and then I've been doing that for about ten years if that answers your question uh, DJ Meat Popsicle says I'm a dirty BTS. <laughs> bath to mouth is that what that means talk nasty to me it's my line <laughs> simply gains says are you able to chart icx uct on binance uh or just not much history hey what's up simply gains by the way um let's go check it out or oh, sorry what, what was it again uh what what was it <laughs> i already forgot it um okay yeah icx okay yeah man you are you're always asking about icon um is this the korean one is is that what it is uh usdt on binance let's see Okay, you, I'm guess yeah. There's not that much history here, man. Um, what I can say is that it looks really bad. There, there, there's not enough history here, and I know that this thing does have more price history in general. Um, so I wonder if we have another exchange where we could see um, where we where we would have more history. Um, Bitthumb maybe, but th this is against. The, I mean, this looks really bad, man. O over no matter which way I look at it, it looks very bad. Um, again, anything that's anything that's consistently making new lows is is not good you had you had your support right here which which you know could have had a chance you basically put in like a little bit of a bear flag right here between this area and uh in this area and then he broke to the downside um so yeah man there's there, there's no indication that this thing is stopping to be quite clear uh unless if you get above this area right here unless you get a what is this area hey what the fuck where's my uh how come I can't see price action over here? I guess it's uh, it's like a dollar sixty. So as long as it's below a dollar sixty and using this area's resistance, which it does look like it tried to get above over here and was rejected, I really don't like this. And I'd say, you know, I don't know where this is gonna go, but it's, you know, it's it's extremely bearish. Um, again, you know, when thing when things are making new lows after new lows you know, a, a traditional thought is like, Hey guys, it's gone, it's gone low enough already. It can't go any lower. It's, you know, look at it over here. It's $3. Well, no, that's the wrong way to think about it. Actually, in my experience, you know, the week at the, the saying is one of the saying is one of the sayings are is, <laughs> Oh my God. Do I even know English? Um, is the weak get weaker and the strong get stronger. And this one is very clearly weak. Um, so, so we're not only in a bearish market, but this one is in a heavily bearish trend and it's just, you know, it's just getting pummeled. So, so yeah, man, there's not, there's not anything. It's just like, it's just the opposite of a blue sky breakout in the fa in the sense that, um, in the sense that in a blue sky breakout, there's no, you know, there, there's nothing to look at until you get some sort of a, uh, some sort of a topping formation. Well, same thing over here until we get a bottoming formation, there's nothing to look at. It's just going, it's just going fucking down. Uh, not, no, no other analysis to say other than that. All right, back now over here to the bitcoins. Uh, let's let's uh, and back now over here to the comments. All right. Uh, on the chart, was that a big uh, titty? Or oh, Jesus Christ, man, these comments are moving too fast, and I can't see them all. Guys, again, if I do um, if I, if I do miss your comment, please do just add it back at the bottom. Uh, unfortunately, I can't look at them uh, like they don't stay on my screen forever. So if you do just add it back at the bottom, I'm happy to look at it. Speed Junkie says, "Yo, Crown, hey, what's up, Speed Junkie? How you doing, man?" And Rocky, what's up, Rocky? So Bitcoin ascent. Uh, once once soul sold to the devil, uh, when agreed to bear it on naked in a. <laughs> 
<laughs> when agreeing to bear it on naked and afraid. Oh my God. Let's just take it one more. Let's just take it one more step, baby. Let's just take it one more step. Let me just get my, uh, my good old phone over here. Jesus Christ, man. Always, uh, always a fun time on the good old phone. All right. Okay. So, um, let's see. Let's see. L, uh, ICX. No, says Peter K. Yeah, man. Well, I'd say, I'd say this is a pretty good analysis of it. <laughs> Am I being censored? Uh, maybe, I, maybe you are. Unfortunately, I do not have, uh, I do not have control over the comments here. Um, this is a little bit more of a, uh, of a, of a less traditional crowns crypto cave, um, uh, crowd. So, so I'd imagine that they, that maybe, maybe some of the language is not as, uh, as, uh, as encouraged here. I'll put it that way. All right. Uh, speed junkie has a nice little emoji to share. Uh, DJ me popsicle says, yeah, the D word is censored. I'm al <laughs> I allowed your last, your last due to context. LOL. <laughs> it, DJ me popsicle. Are you censoring people? A0128 says great content, man, but these 12 year old virgins need to stop being such snowflakes. A D object is a legitimate word and not a cuss. <laughs> fair enough, man. Fair enough. Yeah, man. Uh, a good old dilly, good old dilly dally, if you will. There you go. Broussard, Chris Broussard says, what are the best ways to get your uh, content specifically? Uh, your YouTube channel, Twitter, Medium. Um, my, my, my YouTube channel, I, I apologize if this is, if this is not supposed to be talked about here, but my YouTube channel is, is, is the name that you see in the, uh, it, um, as my Twitter handle, it's just crowns crypto cave. And, uh, that's kind of where I hang out. That's where I do my live streams. I do, I do a live stream here and I'll do a live stream there pretty much every day. Um, so yeah, man, also, uh, yeah, we have plenty of, plenty of other venues within that realm as well. So, uh, so, so I look forward to connecting with you, my friend. Uh, and I, and usually I go on, uh, usually I go live, uh, on this channel at about, uh, you know, what is it about two, two or 3 AM Eastern standard time. And then I go live on my channel about 11 AM Eastern standard time. Uh, let's see. Bitcoin wisdom says Jay Snip told me Litecoin would hit a hundred this week. I bought at 85. Am I okay? Oh my God. Jay Snip, by the way, guys, Jay Snip, a, a genius, <laughs> a ge he's a genius in the way that I have no idea how this guy got fucking popular. But yes, yes, I do. He's been telling people everything's going to the goddamn mood for the whole fucking time. And by the way, Jay Snip, wait, is he on my couch? Jay Snip, are you there? Jay? 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 Is that you? No, that's Tone. Data, oh, Data, da Data Dash looks so good, man. Wow, Data Dash, you really wear that, that dress so well. Um, but, but yeah, man. Um, so again, again, guys, um, oh, uh, sorry, I, I need to go look at, uh, at Litecoin. Uh, yeah, man, uh, data or Jay snips guy, Jay, Jay snips, uh, has a very fucking interesting technical analyst who does this. This is, this is my problem, problem with Elliot Wade, but he's been telling everyone that Litecoin's going to go to fucking a thousand or like 10,000 bucks by the end of the year. Uh, extremely, extremely, extremely misleading. And this is, this is why, you know, sometimes I do want to be a little bit more aggressive in saying, Hey, I don't know if this guy is, uh, is got, if this guy is being deliberately misleading, but, uh, but this is just, it's just straight up wrong. Um, there, there's no other way to, to kind of get to it. Um, so again, going back over here to Litecoin, um, there's nothing saying that we're going, whoa, to a hundred bucks. Absolutely fucking not, man. Oh my God. So he's telling you it's going to a hundred bucks. Um, the way that I look at this is that we have some sort of a, uh, again, we have some sort of a bear flag formation, a broadening wedge, whatever the fuck you want to call it right over, right over here. So your upper resistance of that area would be 91. So as long as we're living below 91, there's, there's nothing bullish about this. And in fact, we're very close to breaking, um, this support right here. And if we do break that support, well, you can make a measured move based off of, you know, this, this bear flag or broadening wedge formation. And that's essentially going to put you right around here, around this horizontal area at around $55. So I'd kind of, a, I'd kind of disagree with Mr. J. Snip, uh, respectfully disagree, that probably uh, the charts would most would more likely indicate, I'm not saying it's gonna happen, we, don't, we do not have confirmation just yet, of course. I wanna be very clear about this. No confirmation on this idea just yet, but, but we're damn close, we're damn close. If we close this daily dilly below this area right here, 74, 74 and a half bucks on Coinbase GDAX, um, then yes, you know, the, the, the next kind of area to be looking at is this horizontal area right here at about 55 and, 55 and a half bucks. Um, overall, Litecoin extremely weak. Uh, by the same token, you know, yes, you might have a little bit of an uptrend. You, you might get your $100 number if you were to close a daily dilly above uh, 87 bucks. But at the current moment in time, uh, I don't see anything indicating that it's going to depend on Bitcoin at the end of the day. If Bitcoin rallies, Litecoin will rally. If Bitcoin falls, Litecoin will fall probably harder. So again, you know, keep that in the back of your minds. And, uh, you know, th I don't see anything else indicating that um, at this current moment in time. Could it happen? Yes. But we're actually much closer to breaking this and resolving this pattern to the downside than we are to the upside. But maybe King Bitcoin does save the day. You never know. You never know. All right. Back now over here to the comments. And let's see. Um, um, um. 
guess ICI, I guess ICX back to ICO price. Yeah, man, you're gonna see that a lot with a lot of these uh, with a lot of these ICOs. Uh, Patrick says, do you think Bitcoin likely to have a little rally than 4,400? Um, so Patrick, yeah, man. So I I, I always want to kind of um, ask myself, what are the two different scenarios? Like, there, there's always got to be at least some trigger for a bullish scenario and some trigger for a bear scenario. And the best that I can come up with is essentially um, is essentially the price action going on in 2014, where we did have a major bull trap, essentially where we are right now in the current price action. So going over here, you can see in 2014, we have a very, we, we have, uh, our, our indicators are very similar in that, sorry about this. Um, uh, our indicators are very similar in that our exponentials are kind of crossing over at the same time and producing the same sort of price action movement. Again, this is why algorithms and this is why um, why bots are so powerful in this market because they will tell you where, where, where the sell programs are. And, uh, and right here, I believe we're somewhere right over here. And and if we are doing something like this, then this would imply a major bull trap being put in, which would put us at the top of our um, at the top of our uh, um, uh, bear flag range. The top of our bear flag range being this area right here around 7,000. So it's possible, it's possible, but the way that this, this looks extremely weak to me right now, I don't see anything indicating um, that that's gonna happen in the price action. That's the only thing that I can come up with. So again, I always wanna be as thorough as possible and offer up both sides because there are are always both sides uh, to the coin, you know, no pun intended. But with that said, man, I want to be very clear in this. I don't see anything really indicating any sort of reversal, any, you know, any sort of prolonged upwards movement. Um, even, you know, again, the, he, here's a scary part, guys. Here's where maybe not scary. It's we have perspective, so it's a good thing. It's an opportunity. And and this is this is the perspective is that as long as we're below this blue box area right here, there's there, there's there's no change in trend. There's no change in behavior. There's there's really no no reason for me to believe that we're switching the market cycles. Could it happen? Yes, but it's not until we actually start closing dillies above this area right here where I start believing that. Instead, I have every other indicator telling me we're likely going downwards. Um, so again, we might have already tested that that area already, and maybe we are getting ready for our move down. Um, but you know, but again, you know, just 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 in the same sense that you know we don't have confirmation on upside just yet, we don't have confirmation on downside just yet either. It does look ugly within this formation, and this formation is heavily bearish. But it's not until we start closing dillies below you know sixty forty where we start saying, okay, this looks like it's confirmed, and it's very and it's now extremely likely that we that we uh, that we play this out. All right, um, okay. All right. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? Uh, Hyped on crypto says no. You are not being censored. Fair enough. No censoring. No censoring going on. Beautiful. Uh, thanks, DJ Meat. <laughs> you gotta love good old DJ Meat. Uh, hey, thank you for posting that. Hyped on crypto. I do appreciate that. Uh, Marcos H says, what volume would you be looking for 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 during capitulation? Okay, that's that's a really good question, man. Um, let's go over this over here. Let's let's just look at past past uh, past capitulation volume type styles. And well, over here in 2014, when you actually did have true capitulation, which again, capitulation on this weekly dilly over here was quite literally a move of 45%, 45 fucking percent in one week, one seven day trading period, 45%. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I'll, I'll, stop, I'll stop explaining on that. But essentially, this is kind of the volume, this is kind of the, uh, the extreme volume that I'm looking for to signify something like that. We did have a significant volume right here on your February 6th low. However, us making new lows below that, that makes this not really stand out in the current price action. In fact, it looks a lot more like what's going on over here when you're kind of topping still. Um, so again, again, big thing, big thing with this is that, um, is that, you know, I'm sure people are going to say, Hey crown, you know what? In 2014, uh, you know, the price was a fraction of where, it, of where it is right now. How could you compare this volume to, to looking for something over here? And I have two things to say about that. First things first. To, to kind of address any questions before it comes up. First things first, we have, like our friend said before earlier, we have more people, more participants within this market. There's more deep pockets within this market. So yes, you know, even though the even though the price is a fraction uh, of what it was over here, and this volume is represented in bitcoins traded, not dollars traded, um, to be to be quite clear, uh, there's also more people invested, in, or there's more people interested in the market, and uh, and we certainly, you know, I don't really have, I, I'm I'm looking for something like that, um, and and the big point being is that you know it doesn't need to be one to one volume on this or, or even this right here. I mean, th this is your turnaround dilly right here, but this, this is your capitulation dilly right here. 
Um, but what I'm looking for is something that stands high and short high. Uh, head and shoulders above all the all of the relative uh, volume in the current time frame. That's what I'm looking for. Here you can see very very clearly right here. This is just this just stands out right in your face. It looks like a middle finger just saying fuck you, fuck you. Um, and uh, and over here we kind of have it right here, but it's 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 not in the right context of price action. So again, um, again, man. Um, I, I'm looking for something like this in, in the way that it's, re that it's relatively just absolutely massive in how we stand out to the, rel to, to the, to the, uh, to the surrounding price action. That's what I'm looking for. There's not a, there's not necessarily a number that I'm looking for, but I'm looking for something like that to, to signal that some sort of a, some sort of an institution, some sort of a, some sort of big money has stepped in and said, Hey, I will be accumulating now. So step aside little boys. And, uh, and that's, that's going to be the big, uh, that's going to be the big thing. All right. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, Tyler says, bro, come on. LOL. You think I own like, oh, God damn it, Tyler. You're trolling me. You motherfucker. Censor him now. <laughs> Just kidding. Of course not. Of course not. Uh, <laughs> 80128 says eight hour. Yeah, I know. Of course, Tyler doesn't have fucking Litecoin. He's friends with Rocky. Jesus Christ. Uh, 80128 says eight hour forming Elisa. Elisa. I've never heard of, I've never heard of Lisa before. <laughs> uh, let's see. What is, a, what is, oh, like, uh, like, uh, like the, like the Simpsons patterns. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, eight hour just, you know, this is your Darth Maul. This, this is your Darth Maul dilly right here. And, uh, whenever you have that, that's, that's pretty fucking bearish to be honest, man. And this really does look like a bear flag right now. Oh man. I am. It's, it's like, it's beg. It's like, it looks a little bit too obvious is, is my biggest problem with it. It looks a little bit too obvious. All right. Back now over here to the, uh, to the more recent price action. We can just get the movie mode going. So it's more, more, more interesting. Um, okay. Uh, Marco Sage says, how about uh, Digibyte BTC? Sure, man. Sure. Let's go check out uh, Digibyte over here. Uh, DGB BTC on, uh, let's go Poloniex. I actually do like charting on Poloniex and Digibyte. Okay. So Digibyte's got some interesting going on in that it's actually doing something completely different to the rest of the market. That being, it was rallying massively over here. Yes, it did put in a nice topping dilly right here, but... Uh, oh, we do we do have some bearish divergence going on. So yes, you know you you do kind of have your topping daily right here, and then it's likely that we do consolidate lower. But I don't I, I don't think that this run is done just yet. Um, to be quite clear, yes, we do have support right here, but th this is not strong support. This, this is quite literally distribution right here. Um, where I'd be looking for, uh, you know, on this one is that as long as we're above this area right here, about you know four four ninety, uh, I'm actually very cool with being a buyer right here at about four ninety and having a stop loss right below it around you know four seventy five four eighty, or maybe if if I'm more aggressive right around here around 523 um, but overall the greater picture you know what's different about digibyte in comparison to other things is that it's overall in some sort of a major consolidation phase and actually really being accumulated below this level right here below about 435 so again as long as long as we're closing uh, dillies above 490 i'm okay with it and i'd actually be okay with being a buyer right there uh, myself but but the big area the, the the big area to have your eyes on at least in my at least in my opinion is this area right here this area right here being a, f a 765 if we can start closing dailies above 765 then this thing can actually start really taking off but until that happens you know it's just consolidating and we can you know fuck around in this range for quite some time we've already been doing it for you know more than half a year so we can certainly stay in for quite some more time but overall overall you know it's it's telling you something that it's actually doing something different than the rest of the market and that is that is quite powerful indeed all right back onto the uh, back onto the comments over here um okay uh uh mystery uh mystery crypto theater says good stuff hey man thank you and uh and pleasure to meet you man i haven't seen your name here be here before so i just want to say welcome and uh good to have you in here lazy cell tech boy says <laughs> i always call you lazy cell tech boy do you even know what cell tech is uh, can you can you please check bat and what did you think about the uh the coinbase uh news moon um <laughs> I don't think I don't think it matters, man. Um, I, I really I really don't care what they're doing at, at the end of the day. I, you know, I mean, does it does it matter? Yes, it, it does matter. Of course, of, of course, it does matter. Just because you know, P, you know, Coinbase Coinbase is like the first point of entry for most people. Okay, so let's go. Let's chart this one out, though. That's that's what you're interested in over here. And very clearly, we have we have actually a very very well defined pattern. This is actually quite nice to look at. As um, you know, maybe I could even be a little bit more aggressive. Oh, let me get over here. Uh, more aggressive like this. Let me just uh, scoot this on over here. Something like this would look right. Or maybe, no, l l let's do it like this. Or let's just get, <laughs> sorry about this, guys. Uh, let's do it right, Jesus Christ. Let's do it right here. Okay, this is what it's looking like to me right now. Uh, is that right? Mm, no, I'm, I'm just going to get rid of that. We're going to go with the horizontal. I like horizontals more anyways. Okay, so this is what I'm looking at right here. 
Um, it looks to me like we're having a clear consolidation um, after this big dumping action over here. And we're forming some sort of a, this is typically a bullish consolidation pattern. Um, not always. And, and of course, you know, I always want to say this with the caveat that every, every pattern can break out every goddamn which way possible. That's why I use trend lines to kind of tell me, okay, well, where, where are we actually getting confirmation on a true breakout? And that would be for, for bat up right around here, around 580 or sorry, 5,800. Uh, if we can start closing daily dillies above 5,800, this looks pretty damn fucking good to be, to be quite uh to use a technical term looks pretty damn fucking good because we really don't have anything stopping it from getting to from from getting into like a blue sky breakout territory after that i mean yeah you do have a little bit above there but it would start to look extremely good if we, if 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 we can get daily dilly close above this area right here 5800 um by the same token by the same by the same token uh no pun intended uh i want to see it use this area of support i want to see 460 460 50 um act as support and then this area obviously right here needs to act as support you know in the in, a, in like the greater in the in the greater scheme so if we did if we did come back and test this area right here which is pretty damn common you know you come back and test your breakout area i'd happy to, i'd be happy to be a buyer and have a stop loss right below and if that area does fail if my stop loss gets hit maybe i do try the same thing right around here same sort of idea but overall, it's I'm not too excited about it until we start closing daily dillies above this area right here. That area again being 5800 ish. All right, back onto the cone. What do we do, Mr. Cone? And uh, back on over here to the comments. Um, uh, Patrick says take losses in tether again, man. I can't. Um, so I, I I guess you're not really familiar with me, but I really don't like giving specific you know advice in in that way because I feel like it's very irresponsible because I don't know a lot of things about you. I don't know is well first things first. Are you like are are you a trader? Is this what you do for a living? Well, in that case. I'd say, you know, you got, yeah, it's, 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 it's always a better idea to, to, you know, preserve your capital and take losses immediately. Um, however, you know, are you like a long-term investor? Are you a short-term investor? What's your risk tolerance? Do you have other, do you have other investments in other places? Do you have other forms of income? You know, all these sorts of things come into, come, come into the discussion. And I don't know that about you. So I can't really accurately, you know, say anything of value there. If I did, it would be extremely irresponsible. And, um, and at the end of the day, I can only tell you what I would do and, you know, <laughs> I think you already know. <laughs> Broussard, Chris Broussard says, why does that blue box specifically uh, signal a possible turn in the market? Uh, what in the chart tells you that? Um, which uh, which one? The, 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 the one near our resistance or the one near our support? The one, I'm guessing you're talking about this one right here. The reason why this one is so damn important right here is because it kind of, you can kind of tell that it intersects. Well, I can just move this around here, but, uh, but you can kind of tell that it intersects somewhere around here of this upper resistance of what I look at as a bear flag forming right here. So as long as we're kind of, um, you know, below this, if you want to call it right here, right here, it doesn't really matter. It's just, I want to represent this area right here in it, uh, between the green and this area right here in that, you know, as long as we're below it and closing dillies below it, we have no macro change behavior. The macro change behavior being first things first you know um first things first is that the way that i look at this the whole the full picture everything ev nothing but the picture over here is we had a three-year bull market right here and uh and you might might be asking yourself why the fuck am i talking about this but let me just you know let me just finish this in a second we have a third we have a three-year mar uh, market phase right here to the bull side then we have your reversal phase right here your topping formation followed by your consolidation formation right here the consolidation represented by your green formation also represented well by your orderly by your very orderly drop off in volume right here once we broke this green area the consolidation formation to the downside we got a major spike in volume kind of adding confluence that we're that we're now in agreement the market is in agreement that we're going to resolve the, that we're going to resolve the consolidation to the downside thus resulting in a more prolonged bearish trend so the way that i read this and the reason why this blue box is so damn important is because as long as we're living below this green area right here we have no change of behavior from a macro market cycle perspective if we were to start closing dillies above this area then yes that would be a change of behavior and by definition i would have to reevaluate my sort of stance within the market and have to go at, at the very least neutral on the market i'd certainly have to go neutral on the market and maybe even bullish at that point in time but until that actually happens we have no change of behavior at all whatsoever and the trend is well it's very clear i think it's pretty damn clear um okay uh, Paul Galicia says, I feel dirty being in this channel. It's like I'm cheating on crown with crown. <laughs> Get over here, baby. Give me a little hug. <laughs> crown once a year. Yeah, man. I'm, uh, it's, it's all good, man. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. Paul Galicia you are. <laughs> You have some of the best. You have some of the best one-liners, man. Um, 
Uh, could you check ABC? God damn it, DJ Me Popsicle. Yes, I can. Uh, <laughs> Simply Gain says, does it feel like we've been in the 6,000 range longer than any other price range this year? I feel. Uh, mm, I don't know. Does it feel like that? It's only been a month, man. It's only been a month, really. Uh, over here, we started in about uh, June 10th, and it's now July 14th. So, yeah, man, it's only been a month. We, we stayed in the... Uh, well, this, this is a huge range right here because this was a whole market phase between 6,000 and 12,000, but that was six months, right? That, that, or sorry, that was about four or five months between this area right here. Um, but that was also a massive range. So it kind of, you know, again, this is why our human brains are just not, you know, why, why people are traditionally not good traders because it's it's difficult to understand and uh, and have perspective on time um, related to that sort of thing. It just kind of, it really fucks with our human uh, perceptions for some reason. All right. Uh, fuck yeah. Good shit. XLM. Uh, Mystery Crypto Theater. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, let's go look at XLM. Good old, uh, good old Stellar Lumens. Stellar Rumens, if you're Hajin Rhee over there. And let's see. All right, so Stellar Lumens actually has something interesting as well. So, and I really do apologize about all of these uh, all of these trend lines over here. I, I know that it's annoying, but they are, they are valid. Is the problem? Uh, I'm gonna get rid of some of the top uh, of some of the top ones. I'm gonna clean this up with you, as uh, they're not really relevant right now. They will be in the future. Don't don't take this as me saying they're not relevant anymore. They are still they actually are still very relevant. It's just uh, I want a cleaner chart as I am a little bit OCD. Okay, so let's let's kind of give the bull and the bear of this thing right here. The bull is is that is that it looks to me like we're consulting this major area right here. This area being between uh, eighteen and a half cents and about you know th this descending trend line right here around you know forty five cents if you want to call it that. Um, so so consolidation you know t this is typically a bullish consolidation. However you know like I said I've seen every goddamn consolidation break every fucking way. Um, so does it you know does it mean anything? Well. It's better, it's better than nothing, right? Uh, the more important part is that in the more immediate time frame right here, it looks like we are forming some sort of a falling channel. Now, it's not a perfect falling channel, but it does have the right volume characteristics, and I and you know its its shape is okay as well. It's it's not picture perfect, but it's it, it's it's not wrong, uh, so to say. So I will interpret this as as a falling channel for now. Um, and falling channels are, are statistically more likely to break out to the upside. And uh, you can kind of see it flirting with this area right here, this area being your horizontal level right here at about 20 and a half cents. So if we can, here, here's a key point, if we can close this uh, th this daily dilly above, uh, let's call it 21 cents, then I believe that we would have a nice, uh, we, we would have a nice little move being put in. But here's also the thing is that, you know, the bear view, the bear view is that we have a lot of bad crosses going on in your exponentials right here. And overall, this thing looks very heavy. Um, yes, it is performing better than most other things. But, uh, but you know, you know, here's the thing. Here's the problem with it is that as long as we're below this area right here, about 30 cents, there's really no reason to be uh, long term um, happy about this thing, you know, because we just don't even have we, we really don't have any any impressive formation going on. This could fail at any time. We could get the bullish break of this falling channel rally up to test it, to test your green 55 and fail from that. I see it all the fucking time. Um, so, again, you know, you always have to interpret your you always have to interpret your your patterns. Your, your 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 daily formations it within the context of our current market cycle and our current market cycle is marked off and led by bitcoin right so if bitcoin plays out some downside it's likely that stellar will as well even though even though i actually do think stellar is okay although although i had a friend who was kind of being courted by their uh by, by, by their management and he said that they're not okay so fair enough i'll just kind of put that out there uh i won't name any names because it's probably not uh, probably not very good um but uh but yeah man so at the end of the day, what I have to say about this is that, you know, yes, we might have a little bit of a short term pop right here. It is hinting at one, um, but you have a lot of resistance all the way up. Again, this area right here, 23 and a half. Uh, this area right here at 25 cents. Uh, of course, your 200 exponential right here is always going to be a uh, big resistance. And then it's not until we start closing dailies above 30 cents that I can get excited about this. And by the same token, if we do lose this support right here, which we just held on by, 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 by a fucking hair at uh, about 18 cents, then uh then, then then it's a long ways down there's just not that much support built up on the way uh around eight and a half cents to maybe even you know six cents would, would make sense which is actually where I, I used to be a market maker in uh in stellar fun times definitely fun times all right back onto the comments over here uh let's see people still can still care about coinbase yeah man i i'm, I'm right with you there on that one but you know it, it does matter just from like a public perception right just because uh just because that's like the first point of entry for most people i mean like how you know that was that was certainly where i first came into crypto is like i'm like, all right, well, how, did the, how the fuck do I buy this shit? Um, we got Litecoin, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. What the fuck is this? And that's also what I want to talk about right now. I am so disappointed with Coinbase as a, as a whole. 
because they are making it just more and more confusing for for you know Joe Blow to kind of get into the space because you know when when I first got in and I feel like you know at least at least I'm like used to you know the digital era I'm like what the fuck is this Litecoin and Ethereum cone going on over here I had no idea I just knew about Bitcoin um, and then and now it's confusing enough and I had you know it took me a couple of weeks to even research into that kind of shit and uh, and figure that one out for myself. So you can just imagine people coming in now, you know, Mr. CNBC watcher saying, okay, now what's all this Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, uh, Litecoin, uh, uh, now we got zero. what the fuck is ZRX, what the fuck is BAT, what the fuck is, you know, what the fuck is this, what the fuck is that? At the end of the day, man, it's just, it's like, what are you, what are you trying to do, Brian Armstrong? What are you trying to do, man? All right, uh, to, uh, Topher Darling said, hey, what's up, Topher? How you doing, by the way? ISTM Robinhood Crypto is, is way more important. I have absolutely no idea what that's even about. Um, but again, man, you know, at the end of the day, yes, anything anything that allows people to or, or makes it more accessible for people to get money in uh, their money into the space is technically a good thing. Um, but you know, but is that where the big investors? Is that where the big accounts are coming through? No. And, uh, and like I kind of you know briefly briefly said before, if if you have less than a hundred million in this space, it's it's really it's it's really a drop in the ocean. Is my point with that? And I don't mean to say that in like an arrogant way, but it's we we really overstate the importance of fucking you know retail investors in any sort of market market. Okay, Simply Gain says the only coin I decided to sell for my alt back weeks ago was Bat. Ah, oh, the pain. I always it always feels like that, doesn't it, man? It always feels like that. Uh, A zero one two eight says you and Frank Nain, Frank Yang would have fun with some big black D objects like double D's or oh like Dillies. I see, I see what you did there. Uh, thank you, says Pat Patrick. My pleasure, man. My pleasure. Can we says hey man. Uh, thanks for another stream. My pleasure, man. Hey, it's always it's always good going back and forth, with you man. Although I'm cheating on you with you. <laughs> All good, man. All good. Hey, Z Rex, how you doing, man? Uh, long time no see. It's only been it's only been twelve hours, but I'm glad to, glad to have you back in here. Yo, man, I did uh, did Coinbase just pump and dump yesterday. <laughs> Speaking of XLM, have you used uh, Stellarport? No, I haven't, man. I haven't. I I, I kind of do want to go over there, but again, I'm a little bit uh, turned off because, like I said, one of my friends who is a master programmer was being courted by Stellar, um, you know, to to go do some stuff over there, and he told me he. Uh, he, he did their kind of uh, trial run, I, sp I suppose you could say, and uh, they asked him to do a few coding things and programming things. And, uh, and he said that their, that their whole structure is really, really bad. So I'll leave it at that, man. All right. Uh, Thomas Lo hey, Tomislav, what's up, man? How you doing? A few days for, for Litecoin, Croatia wins, will win England. They'll win it like they'll take over England. Well... Fair enough. Croatian, Croatia, <laughs> Croatia is probably a nicer place. But fair enough. If if you're English, I didn't say that. <laughs> Don't listen to me. Mystery Crypto Theater says uh, even with the Coinbase news, uh, again, man, you know, news, uh, bullish news in a bearish market typically gets sold into. And and let me just kind of verify this and kind of run through through it with you, so so we can kind of be on the same page here. But okay, so so everyone was talking about consensus. Good old consensus over here is going to save the day. Well, actually, in fact, consensus was right here, and it pumped you right into this now. Nasty of nasty of nasty uh, crosses right here on your exponentials. This was your traditional death cross, your perfect death cross, where price action is being pulled into the cross and then spit back out, thrown back out, resulting in a major, major downside. In fact, I would say that consensus was used to sh to fill a lot of short bags over there. As um as again, you know, it's very clear what the bots were doing over here. What's another good event that we had? Um, uh, I don't know. Taxes was somewhere over here. We're gonna have taxes, guys. Tax day in America, and, and all the people and all the people are just gonna come back with their money, and they're gonna be say like, "Hey, guys, I just wait until the last day of fucking tax day, and uh, and here you go. It's back into the back into the market." And then over here, over here, it was Ju it was the July Fourth rally, guys. Every, guys, we're just dipping because it's the July 4th. You know, people are just taking out their money to buy some hot dogs and fucking beer. Who doesn't who doesn't want to do that on a July 4th? <laughs> There's, don't worry, guys. At the end of the July 4th, they're going to come back right into this market. They're going to find all that all that magic internet money back in their pockets and say, you know what? I want to buy some more Bitcoin instead of hot dogs. You know, <laughs> so again, man, uh, bullish news in a bearish market just gets sold into in my in my experience. Um, you know, yes, you will have a little bit of a pump. I'm sure there's going to be a, I'm sure they're, they're most likely, I, again, I don't want to be 100% sure, but there's going to most likely be a pump leading into that, um, le leading into the ETF date at, uh, at, at, on, on August 10th or whatever the fuck it is. Um, but at the end of the day, unless if the market cycle is actually changed, it really, 
I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's gonna, uh, you know, change anything like that. Again, man, you had, you had, uh, what was it? Um, Ethereum, Ethereum and Bitcoin are not securities over here. It just gets sold into, man. It just gets sold into. Again, this is, this is why, this is why reading the news and listening to the news, in my experience, is a, it's a very, 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 very losing strategy. I've never met anyone in my life. Um, as you know, as a trader who's been successful over time and not just successful, but wildly successful who trades the news. In fact, I would argue that if you're reading the charts and if you can look at charts pretty damn well, you're going to know that you're going to likely know what's going on in the news uh, before it gets announced. Because again, the, the news when it's announced doesn't mean that it just happened right then and there. It hap it likely happened much before then as you know, people, you know, the fucking news anchor has to be told by someone and he doesn't just like go straight onto the news at, uh, to, to, uh, onto his venue and say, hey guys, this is happening today. No, he probably fucking talks to his friends too. And then they talk to their friends and then it's like a week later and then he finally says it. Um, so again, this is also an unregulated market. There's no such thing as insider trading. You can do whatever the fuck you want. And I can tell you from experience that even in highly regulated markets like equity options, there's still some very shady shit that goes on there too. So yeah. All right. Uh, back onto it uh, over here. Uh, Off kilter concepts says, I feel like I'm learning so much so fast. Much love fam. Hey, my pleasure, man. My pleasure. Always a good time, Mr. Off Kilter Concepts. Simply Gain says, breaking nose. Coin lace, coin, coin pays delist Bitcoin. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it, man. You gotta love it. Rick Lewis says 3 a.m. for me and gotta get up at uh, and got up at 6 a.m. yesterday, so almost 24 hours. Hey man, whoa, you're a true crypto crypto fiend over here. Great stream crown. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate that. It's 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 been uh, it's been good speaking with you, Mr. Rick Lewis, and I hope that you have a nice, restful sleep, man. Take care. All right. Okay. Just just going to keep on talking as we got a little bit more time here, guys, a little bit more time here. And again, just kind of filling out this uh, filling out this flag formation over here. So this this really makes me want to go short. Oh, my God. Should I should I do it is a real question. Should I do it? Okay, so if I go short here, here's here's a real question. Where can I manage my risk that makes sense? It would have to be sixty three hundred. So that's that's about seventy five dollars risk. Do I really want that? Is the real question. And honestly, no, I don't believe that that's worth it. Seventy five bucks, and we're st we still got this major support right here, which has been kind of producing some good bounces. So again, it's not. It's, I'm 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 very happy to actually wait for confirmation of a break of this support area right here to 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 begin a short or at least go cash. All right. Hey, take care, Crown. Hey, take care, Mr. Simply Gains. Uh, uh, thank, I really do appreciate that, man. I hope that you have a phenomenal day yourself. Can you please check uh, Spy? Yeah, man. Let's go check out Spy, dude. Let's go check out Spy. I already do have it um, charted over here. And let's see what it's doing. Ah, oh, look at this, man. Ooh. Anyone who's short, anyone who shorts legacy markets is, uh, is very misguided. I feel, man, <sighs> everyone thinks that they're a fucking genius because... <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant here, if you don't mind. I, I apologize about this, but everyone, it seems like everyone on fucking Twitter has become a genius because they found the market, the, the Wall Street market cycle psychology cheat sheet. And, and this looks like a topping formation right here. It looks like Bitcoin, guys, and it's going to go down. We're going to have that crash that everyone's been talking about. Peter Schiff has been telling me that this, that this market is, is on its last legs for the last 20 years. Um, but, but hey, th there's nothing bearish about this right now. In fact, you just had a major breakout right here. Maybe not a major breakout, but 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 certainly confirming above this resistance right here, which I really do like. Yes, you do have resistance right here, which is a former gap, and you do typically have pressure around there, and you do have another gap right here. So you'd imagine that if we do get back up to about 284, we probably do have an initial reaction down. But this looks pretty fucking good, to be quite clear. Um, I don't see any any slap in the face signals that this is. Well, we okay uh, okay he, here we go. We do have we do have one signal that this that this doesn't look too good. Is we have a lot of a uh, lot of bearish divergence on our oscillators right here um but yeah we just turned down on our stochastics as well so 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 yeah that's the best that i can come up with right here but again man again um uh as far as like the dilly formations go it looks good the uh, the only the only counterpoint that i can come up that i can come up with is uh is is the um is is our oscillators which you know don't don't always tell the full story uh volume profile is actually suggesting is suggesting a big move as well volume profile is bullish right here as well um so again man all, overall i think it's extremely misguiding when you know people just think that they're experts for some goddamn reason and i uh, i mean that that's that's very arrogant of me to say let me explain why um it just seems like people are always calling downside for this thing based off of, you know, some sort of a fucking cheat sheet that they found online that, that, you know, made sense one time. But again, you can superimpose that fucking cheat sheet on just about any topping pattern. and It'll make sense until it actually doesn't is the big problem. How do you, how would you know if this, if this was reversing, how would you know? 
Good question, Crown. <laughs> um, how would you know that this is reversing? Well, if we started closing dailies below this area right here, or or more aggressively below this area right here, 263 and a half, and and uh, more conservatively, 258 and a half. Um, then yes, we might have a reversal on our hands. But until that happens, there ain't nothing bearish about this. Again, as long as we're above this area right here and this area right here, I, I really can't be bearish on this. And in fact, you I mean, you can come all the way back down here and maybe you do, maybe you do come back down and test this area, consolidate around here and then, uh, and then try a little bit higher. But overall, man, there's, uh, that's, it's, it's a pretty strong chart, man. It's a pretty strong fucking chart. All right, back now over here to, uh, to the comments. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, uh, it's just zero says crown. What it up? What it up, my brother? Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Good to see you, man. Hey, good to see you too, man. Always a pleasure, man. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Never a chore, as they say. Uh, Topher says calm tea. Uh, okay, all right. <laughs> Usually, like we, you know, we use words. Uh, calm tea. Uh, unless if this is a stock, I don't. Um, Unless if this is a stock, I'm guessing uh, I'm, I'm guessing it's it's not on trading view. So it, it, so please do specify if you do want to look at. Okay, I'm guessing these are stocks because these are all. Yeah, I actually used to I used to I used to make markets in XBI. Um, okay, well we can, we can go look at it for a second here. All right, <laughs> saying to short short the commodities. All right, well okay, does this even trade? It's a real question. This thing does not even fucking trade, man. Jesus Christ, uh, <laughs> you're a hero for even trying to trade this, man. Um, Okay, uh, should we short this? Uh, I don't. I uh, I don't really see any reason myself, man. Um, in fact, I'd say, you know, as long as you're as long as you're above this area right here, as long as you're above this horizontal area right here, I actually think it's okay. Um, this area being thirty seven and thirty seven and seventy cents. If we if we do start closing dailies below thirty seven bucks and th and seventy cents, and yeah, it might come to come under some pressure. You wanted to also look at XBI. I used to make markets in this in equity options, man. Um, so I actually am quite familiar with it. Biotechs, biotechs are like the fucking cryptocurrencies of the uh, of the stock market world. And would I short this? Absolutely fucking not. Oh my, please, please do not make this mistake, man. Please do not make, make, make this mistake. This will be a career ending move. Um, and I, and I say that with all due respect, man, I really do. Um, because I, I know, I know that intuitively people see this and they're like, oh, it's, ex it's overextended. We're going down. No, this isn't a blue sky breakout, man. There's, there, there's nothing indicating that we're, that we're topped out here. Um, in fact, we just had it. We just had a nice confirmation of breakout right here. I, I really, 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 really caution against that thinking. The only way that this can even, you know, hint at a reversal is if we start trading below 83 and 83 and a quarter right here. If you if you start closing dailies below this area right here, then yeah, maybe maybe you do have a reversal on your hands. But as as far as I or sorry, actually, you know what? You could actually say a little bit more aggressively this area right here, which is also going to likely be your daily 200 exponential, right around 90 bucks. So so you know maybe you could say that if. You you want to be a little bit more conservative, but I, I, I really, really caution against that, man. Um, you're also, I mean, you do have some bearish divergence going on in your oscillators right here, but is this, is this legitimate? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure about that just yet. Again, we can come back down to here and to be completely fine. We could come all the way back down to here and be completely fine. It's not until we start closing daily dillies below, you know, 90 bucks where it starts kind of come under some pressure and some questioning and, and, uh, and, and very clearly right around here, around 82 and a half bucks. As long as it's above there, man, I, I really, 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 really caution against that. Again, I'm quite familiar with this one as well. I used to make, I used to make uh, markets and in, in, in options on it. Um, Okay, and uh, short EEM. Uh, all right, um, all right. E, uh, do, all right, we'll, we'll we'll go look at it for one second, man. All right, uh, EEM uh, emerging. Uh, well, maybe. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Th this one. This one is pretty good. Short. <laughs> I do agree with you on this one, man. Uh, yeah. We just took out this major area right here. As in fact, if you do get a, if you get a throwback to this area right here at about forty five and a half, I would sell the shit out of that. Um, but again, this is not fucking financial advice, and I can change that opinion at any at any given moment. Uh, but overall, yeah, it does look like does look like we actually do have some some topping going on over here. Uh, but again, it, but by the same token, if you do start closing dailies above this area right here, above uh, 40, 45 and a half, then, uh, then, then yeah, I would not want to be short. Um, but at the, but at the same time, you're getting a lot of bad bad crosses on your exponentials, and overall, it looks pretty weak. Um, okay, back on over here to the comments. Uh, please do Litecoin. We've already done Litecoin, but we'll do it one more time. It looks like shit. I'll tell you that straight up. Um, overall, Litecoin basing on its lows once again, just like Bitcoin. And uh, and you know, if Bitcoin takes a step down here. Litecoin's next area is around 55 and a half. If uh, if Litecoin holds itself up here, well, it's still in a range. It's still in some sort of a you. If you can, if you want to call this a bear flag, a rising channel, or a broadening wedge, it doesn't matter what you call it. It's typically a bearish formation. 
and the, and the, and the problem with this man, the problem with this is that is that Litecoin will will maintain the posturing of this bearish formation as long as we're respecting this area as resistance. And this area is rising over time, you know, coming around 90, 90 bucks all the way to about you know a, a hundred bucks over here. So so that means that we could you know as as long as we're below this area right here, it's still very very bearish, man. In fact, we're, we're we're more close to breaking this pattern to the downside. So if we if we do get confirmation on this pattern breaking to the downside, it would be marked by a uh, by by a daily dilly close below 74 bucks. If you have that, then yes, the measure move off this does take us down to about 55 bucks, which is a nice horizontal area um, of support. So again, I'd wait for confirmation on that because again, you don't have confirmation either way. You can you can fuck around in this in this range for quite some time, and hey, you can also still break it out to the upside too. That is possible. I don't want to discount that fact. It could happen. I've seen it happen before but it's very unlikely. All right, back now over here to the con to, uh, to, to the Bitcoins and to the comments, see what we got going on. Uh, it's just zero says, any chance? Yeah, man, of course, SHSP, -S it's been going nuts, all right? SHSP, uh, SH, is this shit, po is this shit post? <laughs> or sharp, sharp spring, okay. All right, fair enough. Oh, this thing does not trade either, man. What the, f what are you guys doing? With are these penny stocks or some shit? Um, all right. Uh, well, fair enough. Hey, uh, there's nothing to say about this, man. It's it's in a blue sky breakout, and all you you know, despite what anyone tells you, this is a blue sky breakout. All you can do in this in this scenario is you can say it's it's just gonna go up until you get some sort of a topping formation, and that's gonna be your signal. I mean, maybe you could say that this is a cup and handle formation. I'm not. I'm just. I'm not saying that it is, but may, I mean, if I had to say something, that would that would imply a move somewhere around you know thirteen dollars and twenty cents. Maybe that's where it kind of tops off at. But overall, we have great accumulation going on. Especially Especially below this level right here about you know four four and a half bucks and we're just seeing it play out man again blue sky breakouts there there's nothing there's there's no technical analysis to, to do on this it's just going up until it's not and i know that's not too helpful but what i'm looking for to kind of signal reversal is some sort of a major major uh you know bearish type uh dilly formation on heavy volume and that's going to be your signal to uh to potentially get out or at least mine. Uh, Z Rex says, "How about ZB?" All right, man. Let's go check out ZB. Okay, good old ZB. Uh, ZB uh, over here. Uh, uh, you talking about T bond futures? All right, we can go check it out. I'm guessing you want to look at the uh, at the at the most recent expiry. And your your daily and weekly are showing that uh, you do have a major pivot on the market right here. It looks like. Yeah, yeah. Th th this is a pretty major area right here, man. Um, so the way that I look at this is that you know. It is it is getting pretty it is getting pretty bearish. You're getting a lot of bad crosses on your exponentials right here, but it does it is close to this resistance. And if and if it does start closing weekly weeklies above this resistance above uh, uh, 160, 166 and a quarter, then then yeah, you might actually have have a nice little run. Your next big resistance would be right around here. But again, you know, you just put in a bear flag right here, and you kind of you already confirmed that. So it's like. So let's just kind of do the measure move off that. Where would that kind of spit back to just see if we've even played it out just yet? And uh, this would be suggesting that we have a lot of downside into this area right here at about 133 and uh, 16 cents, man. So yeah, again, um, that's that's kind of the two scenarios and the two trigger points that I can think of right there. All right, uh, Zoran Jovic says I think Bitcoin had five ways up in the last three years. Uh, I'm not an I'm not an Elliott Waves guy, man, and. Uh, <laughs> I'll just leave it at that before pissing any people off. Um, if you look at the monthly chart and we have uh, and, and we will have a long bear market, what do you think about Bitcoin bottoming out in summer 2019? What is your estimate on that? Um, okay, so I do have some thoughts on that, man. I do have some thoughts on that. I don't do Elliott Way myself, but uh, but but I do have some thoughts. Now here is a 10-year chart of, uh, of Bitcoin over here on Bitstamp, and I've made this logarithmic trend line that's never been broken in the almost 10-year history of Bitcoin, starting all the way back from the genesis, and um, and we have several things kind of pointing towards this uh, this 4400 region. Now I'm not saying that this is going to be the bottom. In fact, I do have some things pointing much lower than that 4400 region, around uh, 29 to 2500. But but if we were to bottom around this region, which does have a lot of things kind of converging out there, around uh, it's it's also your 786 Fibonacci trace. It's also your, your your 200 exponential that purple line right there. It's also a nice horizontal trend line, and it's also a measured move off your um, off your inverted cup and handle right here, taking us down. Sorry, I've, I've done it too many times today, so I really don't want to go over it again. But um, but my point with this is is that you know this would imply uh, this would imply a time zone right around here on the intersection around uh, sometime in a month actually uh, on August uh, August 10th, which is funnily enough the date where people think uh, Bit or the the ETF will either be confirmed or denied. Uh, in the United States. Now, with that said, 
I do have things pointing much lower, uh, right around here, around uh, 20, 2400 to 2900, which is essentially really, really marked by um, this major inverted cup and handle that we put in right over here. Um, so let me just kind of draw this one out as I haven't done this one today and I should have covered this one. But essentially what we have over here and, and the reason why us getting stopped, uh, getting stonewalled right here, respecting this, this area as resistance is that we still have this bear flag intact and we're still respecting it as resistance. And as long as we're respecting it as resistance, it's still valid. And then when we pull it out, we can see that we do have a greater inverted cup and handle. So I'm talking a little bit fast here. I do apologize about that, but <laughs> just need to get these thoughts out. So with this, we can make a measure move as long as it's valid. So we're going to make the assumption that, that as long as we're respecting this area's resistance, this is going to be valid. And where does that put us? That measure move does put us right around here, around, you know, this blue box territory around uh, 2800, which is also which is also your 886 Fibonacci retracement right here, which is also a nice horizontal level right here. Keep in mind, keep in mind in 2014, in 2014, we did bottom out over here in, in the 2014 scenario. We did bottom out at your 886 Fibonacci retracement right here. So, so this is good confluence right here, so again, for this area. It's also, let me put on over here just one second. Uh, let me just bring up my indicators. And, uh, and, and if we look at our regular simple moving averages uh, right here, this red simple moving average right here is your 200 simple moving average. And you can imagine that it is going to start to curl up and level off around this, this blue box area, again, somewhere in between 23 and about 2900. And this would imply this would imply some sort of a time frame by uh, by 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 early uh, November, perhaps perhaps as we did bottom out um, in the 2014 market cycle along this logarithmic trend line, kind of uh, bringing us down here, walking us down uh, just to uh, just kind of show you know th this logarithmic trend line right here, you know just uh, consistently walking it down as we make new lows, which would be analogous to this area right here. So again, that's kind of what I'm think that's kind of what I'm tentatively think thinking right there. But I do agree with you, man. I do I do really agree with you about the monthly. The monthly is what is scary because the monthly is is, you know, is, is telling you, the monthly is telling you that, you know, traditionally, and I'm not saying that this is going to happen, but traditionally speaking, your strong monthly support is around, you know, 1100 or 1200. So, you know, take that as you will. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it is certainly possible. And, um, and yeah, always have to, always have to prepare for things, um, in that way. Uh, okay. Back onto the comments over here. Uh, let's see, let's see. Um, I, LBX says, uh, Hey crown. Hey, what's up LBX? How are you doing, man? So we tested the 6,800 so many times you think we'll break that soon or drop the other way. Uh, I'm bearish here, man. I'm bearish here. Uh, the only thing that's pointing upwards is basically that bull trap that we had in 2014. Uh, lazy Celtic boy says, thanks for your, t for your, thanks again, bro, for your TA. It, it's, it's always awesome. Much, much respect. And I hit that like button, but it doesn't show on my end. So great and great stream. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Uh, it's crown. What's up? Exposed. It's exposed. How you doing? Uh, Theo Hidema says, please check Cardano. <laughs> we've, man, we've already checked Cardano and XLM, but you know what? We'll do it one more time. We'll do it one more time. And then I'm going to start wrapping this, uh, this stream up. Okay. So, so, so Cardano over here is right at resistance. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's maintaining it so far overall. I, you know, overall you could make the case for this, for, for this being some sort of a long period of consolidation, as long as, as long as we're closing dailies above this area right here, 2000 Satoshi. So as long as we're above 2000 Satoshi, you could make, you could make the claim that maybe we are consolidating this major area, getting ready for a huge run. However, you're getting some very, 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 very bad crosses on your exponentials right here. And to that point, really just from a traditional standpoint, you can't even get excited about this thing as long as we're below this area right here, 2350. And to a more, to a more, a traditional stance um it's not until you start closing dailies above 2600 where you might have a nice little run being put in place but again if it is consolidating you know it's it's got a lot of work to do and it must hold and again this is with the caveat that we must hold above this level right here 2000 as long as 2000 holds then you can make the case for that but it's still you know does this look like a, does this look like a good chart to you? I mean, it's not not the best chart in my experience, but uh, but hey, we'll, we'll just let it play out. All right, uh, expose you following me around, man. Uh, Cardano, <laughs> indeed. Uh, XLM. Okay, we'll look at XLM one more time. One one more time, man. Um, okay, so XLM right here. Stellar on the dollar and same, quite literally the same fucking thing, man. The, the same thing, guys. These these alts they all do the same thing. They're all. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, won't, I won't finish that sentence, but you know, it's again, you're getting a lot of bad cross linear exponentials right here. You are in the context of a short term uh, falling, falling channel right here. A falling channel is typically, uh, does typically get resolved to the upside and we do have the right volume characteristics of it and we do have the right shape. Uh, so, so, so I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and say that we probably do break this to the upside, but I need to see a daily dilly close above this area right here, 20 and a half cents. Then yeah, we might have a little bit of a run to, to test your 55 exponential right here, your, your green line right here. And your also your horizontal area at 23 and a half cents. However, again, just like Cardano, can't get excited about this thing at all whatsoever until we start getting daily dillies closing above this area right here, 30 and a half cents. As long as it's below there, it's, uh, it's just, it's maybe consolidating as long as it's holding above this area right here, about 20 cents. But, um, but yeah, you know, it's just, just a range, man, just a range. If we do break, uh, 17 and a half cents and yes, it's, it's kind of gets, uh, quite nasty as you, as your next big support is around, uh, eight and a half cents. So just keep that in mind. All right. Back onto the cone over here and back onto the comments. Okay. LOL. It's just zero. All right. Thanks for Cardano correctly. <laughs> There you go, man. All right, guys. So I'm going to start wrapping up the most important things to be aware of on Bitcoin. Then I'm, then I'm going to leave you off till, uh, till the next time. Okay. All right. So, so, so Bitcoin over here. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. All right. So I want to, I want to be the most thorough possible in explaining this in that essentially what we have right here, what we have, what we have right here is that, um, is, is that we're in some sort of a bear flag after the second rejection around 6750. This 6750 rejection was quite intense as, um, as, uh, as, as, um, as it kind of showed where the big accounts were having their uh, their their their, uh, their liquidity being full, uh, filled, and with that said, with that said, it also rejected us getting a higher high, but you know, quite obviously, and in that way, we had no change of behavior, so we just kind of play out more downtrend. Now, okay, I'm talking a bunch of shit here. The most important thing to be aware of on this is that as long as we're within the context of this bear flag, we can play rope a dope against this support coming around 6150 and this resistance coming around, you know, 7,000 or 7,100. It is rising over time, just like your support is rising over time. So as long as we're within the bounds of this area right here, there is no change in behavior. It's not until we start closing, you know, uh, you know, higher level dillies above this area right here, about 7,100 or and rising um, over time until we can say, okay, we have a change in behavior and it's time to maybe not be so goddamn bearish. By the same token, um, it's not until we actually break below 6040 right here, being being very conservative with that um, with with that with that number, until I can be extremely bearish. Uh, you know, seeing to let, seeing, say, saying we're going, you know, well below 5,000. We do have several measure moves taking us somewhere right around 4,400. Uh, this bear flag measure move, if it does get confirmed, would take us uh, likely below there. Also, we have an inverted cup and handle, which we showed earlier right here, which does also, you know, point you in the same direction. And, uh, and overall, that does look, you know, it, it does, it, it's on the menu is what I'm trying to say. With that said, there's always a bullish case to everything. And going over here, just looking at just the straight up dailies, uh, the, 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 uh, the straight up daily uh, chart over here with all of your exponentials, we can see that very clearly in 2014, we did have a very similar uh, formation going on right here right here where we kind of took out your your yellow 21 exponential right here uh pump back up above and then and then formed a secondary local low right here with your dilly bodies putting in a major bull trap and then selling all the way back down now not only that but we did um we did put in essentially right here we put in the same sort of formation we put in another bear flag so again if we do uh so 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 maybe it is a fact that we do come back and test the upper resistance of our current bear flag as we did in 2014 before selling down um but if we do break this bear flag to the downside it's 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 very likely to get you know extremely ugly so have we already played this out or not that's the real question here i'm I'm not quite sure myself, but, uh, but, but again, that's why I'm going to wait for confirmation again, confirmation being below 60, 40 or, and, and if we do get above, you know, as it is always possible above 7,100. Um, so again, guys, that's going to do it for this morning. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you guys. I hope everyone has a beautiful rest of your Saturday, uh, morning or evening, wherever you might be in this world. And I'll speak with you guys soon. Take care guys.